You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Gelenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 128 with Addicon and No Monkey. How are you guys both doing today? You first. Me first. You right. first. <laughs> <laughs> no monkey, how you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Uh, dealing with a lot of a uh, backlash, but I, I think I'm handling it okay. <laughs> Just fun looking at the uh, discussion. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, you're you're currently on that villain arc, according to Reddit. So um, hell a villain yeah. arc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you guys have both experienced the villain arc. That's the funny thing. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I should probably I should probably open with a bit of this since it'll be quite relevant. But during TOA, there was like a, a, I'm one month in, and I'm doing great by the way. But like there was this thing one month in where I made a video about like some of the problems and how it was, you know, time for change. And then it was just like Reddit was all over it, and I I realized that. And the title of the video is like me against Reddit or something. So I've been there and I know exactly what it's like in this position, and it's gonna be very interesting how like I I mostly don't agree. So. And we're, but we're in the same position, right? So, like, within the HLC, we do the same stuff. We're the same kind of PVM streamer. So it's going to be super interesting as to why that's even different. And also just, like, how it's not just a slinging mud back and forth thing, but actually conversation about it. Yeah. Anyway, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but, yeah. No, I, I, we're, we're just going to jump right into it. So I want to ask mm-hmm. you, No Monkey, first, like, what do you think the reason, what do you think the main reason for the backlash is, according to, like, the latest video that you uploaded? Um... So I had people afterwards come to me and tell me, um, like, I should have taken a different, like, tact and um, tried to reach, like, mid-levels and try to, like, turn them to my side. And that was never, like, my goal. My goal was the video was to uh, reach out to the people in, like, the same situation as me and, like, get them talking as well as me. Because I feel like I'm, I've been the only one lately. A lot of people um, want the same thing but aren't, like, talking about it. So goal with the video was show that um show to jagex that there is like a group of us that want this content and it's really hard to relate to for uh people who haven't done like most people haven't even done a tob haven't even most haven't even done like a chambers or anything like that no raids no nothing so when i'm coming along and saying i want all this hard content yada, yada it's really hard um for people to follow i think so i i knew it would happen like this but yeah. I'll take a second to say, like, sorry, not go to cut off, but like, no, go for um, it. I do think that probably the most people watching this haven't watched the video. So, like, to sum it up, yeah, the big, the big idea, right, is about how all the high level content in the game right now isn't really stimulating enough for the high level, and it's uh, if it's made uh, as it currently is, it's not made well enough. The quality, the difficulty, it's not anything close to what is matching the player expectation at the high level. That's that's the general idea. Is that uh, fair? Yeah, for the over the last like period, I think. Last great release was like Tob, and I think it's been yeah. um, more more catered towards like mid level players in general uh, since then. Yeah, and Tob was four years ago for anyone wondering. So. Yeah, years and years. A long ago. ass time. Yeah, it's been okay. five years actually. <laughs> yeah, you know what's crazy is Song of the Elves was like. Uh, someone said it was ten years ago recently, and I was like, "There's no way. It's not. It's just <laughs> yeah, not. not." And then I looked. I looked at the dates. I was like, "You're kidding me. It's ten years. And it actually is. It's it's ten years. It's a decade. I feel so old." <laughs> anyway. It's been twelve years, it's actually. Been 12 it, no, years. It, no, it hasn't. <laughs> so, no, you're shitting me. I looked at it the other day. Has it actually? Oh my god! It's been twelve years. No. Okay. So, um, listen, I want to share a few <laughs> of my thoughts because, um, mm-hmm. the, I did watch your whole video, no, because I obviously needed Woo! to before this. It's really and, long. That's that's impressive. Well, first of all, <laughs> I, I just. I just love your rambles because they're actually like concise and you're you actually think it out i think beforehand my rambles are just throw mud at the wall um and see what sticks but um one of the things that kind of caught my attention was the idea that i feel like most high level players think tob was the greatest piece of content of all time um at least well i would say tob and inferno i think they're both obviously different one's single one's multiplayer but uh, one mm-hmm. of the problems, I think, is back then, we were just worse at the game. 
because we see that Tob is nothing like inherently special. Obviously, there are aspects to Tob, which is like there's a lot of depth to rooms and stuff. But I would argue there's a lot of depth to a lot of things. Um, so what exactly makes Tob so great in your guys' eyes? And is it even possible for Jagex to recreate something like that in today's day? I actually have a lot of issues with Tob. I don't really do it at a high level. Um, I don't like speedrun or anything. I think there's a lot of like hammer RNG and stuff involved in the run that makes it kind of not fun to play. There's also cape swaps halfway through, which kind of sucks. I talked about that. Mm. Um, what about what, you what about just like on a on a base level though, excluding excluding speedruns, the actual content as it stands. On a base level, it's excellent. You know? There is so much depth to every single room. Um, Maiden will have yeah. different ways you can freeze the crabs. Uh, bloat will have you can do so many different things to get more damage in that bloat. You can pee neck. You can you can do like last hit chally. You can like there's so many different things. Every single room has something like that, like some very advanced tech that has you like risk your life to get more damage. And they do that almost every single room. It's really really satisfying and fun to learn. Yeah, I more I more or less agree across, across the board. Mm -hmm. And I too don't really participate in top speed runs. I don't I don't find them that interesting. Sorry to all the Nilo enjoyers. Yeah, but, that was you know, great, but <laughs> um, it, it, it does it does have that depth. I'm not like denying the depth or anything, but it's not my cup of tea. But the you know the point is that the base the base version of TOB is like insanely good for what it is. Um, but that is us also looking at it from our position. I think if you're and you know the biggest complaint with TOB is when you're trying to get into it, it's not very noob friendly. There's no the like system for the floor is high. Mm -hmm. you, you you die in a room. You sit out for the room. You can't learn, and the chances of you dying are pretty high when you're learning. So. Yeah, at least from that perspective, it's um, it, it's about the difficulty floor being quite high, and also it being like a, a team requirement as well as the other big one is like people ask all the time, you know, how the hell do I get into Tom? I need a team. Where do I go get a team? And then there's all sorts of stuff we can talk about with that, but those are difficulty barriers that aren't like inherent mechanical difficulty as well. Um, it, yeah, but it, you know, like, sorry, go. No, I was just going to say, one of the interesting things about Tob release, though, is the lack of plugins that most players used. And a lot of them were actually off limits. They were bannable. And so mm -hmm. we, I feel like a piece of content like that, like the reason it took so long just for even the first completion was just simply like our lack of understanding with game mechanics. and They just... were literally um, T-bowing P2. If you go back and look at the footage, it's oh so funny to look God. back yep. on. They were T-bowing P2 and P3, and then Wooks goes, she's weak to Slash! <laughs> yeah. goes and starts whipping. It's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we. I don't know. I feel like it's a different era, and it's really going to be hard to match that kind of um, excitement for a new piece of content unless unless literally it's just wave based or it's something where it's so hard and it's like it's hidden like they make it so you can't do um, uh, whatever it's called monster examine and there's you know multiple rooms where it's I don't know I feel like Jagex said that the reason these pieces of content are so like we, we have such a we have such strong feelings for it like it was such an amazing piece of content is simply because we didn't know what was going to happen in the next room. So you have to keep resetting and then build up your way and then die again and reset all the way where we haven't really seen that in recent years. I don't think it's that because I didn't even play Tob at release. I, I was a little baby noob. I didn't even have max combat, I think, by that point. Uh, I came and started playing it like a year and a half later. I, it's just good. It's just flat out as good. It has a lot of depth. It's really, really good. So what what about uh, TOA? What what did TOA do better than Tob? Is there anything? Well, primarily the accessible. accessibility. Yeah. The accessibility. No, okay. no. and that's like, a good thing. Terms, it, yes, okay. in, in yeah, terms of in terms of purely the accessibility, when you compare Tob to TOA, Tob internally at Jagex is not considered a success purely based on the amount of interaction with it, and therefore the amount of players who are like determined to get there and progress through the game and stick to the game because of that. It doesn't generate revenue for them. It doesn't really do anything for the player base. Um, if anything, it's considered like people avoid it, and it's like a, a boon for the game. It's not. It's not. It's not good at all. Mm -hmm. um, and in comparison to TOA, the accessibility, there are some terrible things with TOA about drop table and and being able to access the drop table at different low invocations. But the fact that it's scalable and starts low and works up is fantastic. Um, yeah. And Jagex is like internally again considers that a mega success. What about item drop rates? Is that yeah, a, the... is that good or bad? And 
You want to um, take this one? I was, I was looking at... I, I look a lot of times on stream, people ask about that, and I look at the rates. It's TOA is roughly like 50% better than um, like Chambers or TOB for drop rate, just in general, like for a rare. Um, and it seems like it's because they expected like 300 to truly be like expert level, like equivalent to like hard mode top or CM, like something people aren't grinding. And it's just not really what it is. Like people usually settle around four to 500 marks somewhere in there. The drop rates are absurd at that level. Like, your chance of a purple is really, really high compared to like a full CM or a hard mode top. Yeah, eight, eight man, eight man, four fifteens cap rate, right? That's cap. So that's, yep, that's fifty five percent chance. Yep. You are more likely to see loot than not, which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and, and then of course we have just amazing items being given through. Uh, so. Listen, let's just go on to the big thing, which is Osmumpton's Fang. That's the big item that's mm -hmm. been talked about a lot, especially with Desert Treasure 2 bosses being released and just the sheer power of Osmumpton's Fang. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on that, and what would you guys like to see changed? Um, it's just the actual... The, the, the core mechanic of how it functions, essentially it, it has a double accuracy role. It makes it extremely accurate across the board. They keep so, they keep adding yeah. these um, weapons that have issues. I think Shadow has a big issue as well. Um, Shadow, the way it falls in with uh, Tebow, like the way Tebow works is it's good if it has a high mage level. Um, the way Shadow works is it's good if they have a low mage level. So if you want to balance these, it's like... Uh, well, if we want Tebow to be bad, well, we'll give it a low mage. Well, then the shadow's good. Okay, we'll just make it immune to ranged and uh, mage. Okay, uh, we'll give it a high defense level. Oh, it has a high <laughs> defense level. What do you use then? Uh, oh, the fang, right. So we've got these, like, three weapons that are just, like, across the board. Like, that's probably what you're going to use at every single boss. Yeah, the, the actual fundamental balancing between those weapons is horrendous right now. It's really hard, yeah. Um, I, do th I do think there are some great solutions. My, my personal... One that I came up with, I think it's still my favorite, is the fact that if you take the fang and understand that like it's it's a stab weapon, it looks like a stab weapon, acts like one, it is primary stab. If you just apply the doubled accuracy purely to the stab bonus uh, attack style, mm -hmm. and you remove it from slash, that just opens up scythe to have its own niche again, and keeps fang in its own very localized stab niche. That's the best solution as far as I'm concerned. Um, and there are a few, but that fits the bill at least. You know, for all the content that we have right now, it, it would make like Scythe flat bis across DT2, for example, which it doesn't have to be, but like, yeah. it would feel much better if it was. Okay, so I'm just going to share my personal take on what should be done with the Fang. This is what I was literally saying, like, month of release, is just get, just make it so the Fang is a charged weapon. Like, that solves literally every issue, because... Right now, I mean, we do have a scythe, and scythe is one of the only charged melee weapons. Is it the only charged melee weapon? Saildor, I guess. Saildor, okay, yeah. Saildor, yeah. Whip. Um, Whip. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, like, the scythe, I mean, Sailor literally, Mumpton. Osmumpton's Fang is so good. <laughs> if they would have just said, hey, this is now going to be charged with wrath runes, you know, one wrath rune, even if it was just one wrath rune or two. It's you, like, I don't think that's enough to offset it personally. I mean, I, like, it wouldn't... It Keep. wouldn't really change the landscape, but it wouldn't really bring Scythe back into meta just because it costed a bit more, I think. Well, I would say it would be a huge... Uh, whatever the balance is, maybe it was Soul Runes or whatnot. My personal take, and this is also because I'm an Iron Man, is a Fang, at least an Iron Man progression, is you just do like a few TOAs and then you have the best in slot weapon for the rest of the game, yeah. basically. And mm. Wrath Runes would have basically gate kept that. It's like, okay, to even craft Wrath Runes, you need to have 95 rune crafting, which is just a huge requirement. Technically, you could just grind that and then have this amazing weapon. But I feel like that would have been a really good chance to say, like, this is like gear progression. This is now a charged weapon. It is going to be better than the rapier, which is also a free weapon. The problem is we have so many melee weapons, and whenever you give any free weapons, like, imagine Scythe was completely free to use, which people are literally advocating for. Then then we would literally have a problem where every other weapon is just useless, basically, in, in most cases, because you just have a free weapon to use all the time. So if they would have just said, and this is... This is also my problem with power creep in general. Like, a sh the shadow is so good. That thing could have just... You could have made it be charged with so much more. I think it's like, what, two soul runes and five chaos? It could have been like five souls and ten chaos per cast. Like, something just extortionate where most people are not going to use it. So you don't have this... 
I don't know. I feel like the progression of the player is there's, nicely put when there's high high the, amounts or high high costs. One, yeah. I'm not like crazy against the idea of charges, but I think there's one thing that is a bit overlooked, and that's violence of blood. If you consider what they mm -hmm. do for both the average raider, like building building their economy as they run through TOB, um, the idea of this item is like, if if scythe is is like not heavily used at all, then these things are. I guess not heavily used, but as long as it has a use, if people aren't doing top, oh, sorry, let me let me, I get my brain is like fuzzled. If 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 people do lots of top, then that means the site is good. That means that the vials of blood prices are going to be decent for. I, I guess it. Okay, you know what? Scrap this. The point is, the vial of blood is like <laughs> a great actual um, item itself, and it, it, if you apply the same thing to to shadow, then it makes a lot more sense to have it like charges via that. It keeps the price sort of more level across the board. It does depend. This is the thing. It's like, am I getting confused? It's like, it depends where you use it and how much it's useful. So you still have to balance the use cases for it. But in terms of the actual charging of it, it's a very good way to do it. Mm. Okay, so we charge was, it with coconut milk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you can choose whatever you want, like Lily of the Valley or whatever it is from TOA. But it's it's an okay way to do it. I still just don't think that having it be a charged weapon solves the inherent issues in that I think the it's... major complaint, the major complaint is that it kills Scythe. That's the major but, complaint, right? But okay. if you had another charged weapon, then they would be on the same bar where it's like these are both charged weapons. Like they I both just, have I a cost know. to it. So now there's a difference. Like obviously Scythe would mostly, you know, be, I'd be better in most cases, I would say. But I feel like Scythe should just always do like more DPS than Shadow. It's weird that like even on like Thermi, where it's like weak to Slash and also weak to Mage, that like Mage is the better option because you have 10 tile range. It's just like Mage is so much more like versatile. And then the the thing that's like limited, like your short range weapon, that's like the best in the game. That's still not better. It's just weird. It feels like un I don't I don't know if it's I don't think it's buff Scythe. I don't know what the deal is. It might be nerf Shadow. I don't know. I think there's really a lot of places like Scythe should be better than Shadow, yeah. and it just isn't. And, and like that's Sire as well. And that's precisely what I mean. Is like if the Shadow had a heavier cost because it's so goddamn good, then it would actually be appropriate for it to outclass it. You know, where it's just like if this weapon is literally if you're literally losing money using this weapon, but it's so damn good. Like that's that's the way to create really powerful weapons in the future. Like for raids four, if we're talking about that in the next, you know year or two like we can have insanely powerful weapons but they need to have super heavy costs and that's the idea of end game weaponry is like not everyone's going to be using this shit because it's so expensive to use but it's so good that's what i want to see personally a lot of people are going to complain about the actual cost of it though to use in the first place i mean but that's the whole I, idea I, I, and, I, I get i get that's the point but like maybe and, it, and, it makes it too uh, too inaccessible I, I wouldn't even say that every players are getting extremely wealthy and um, I remember when the rapier and the scythe came out with TOB like people were literally just using rapier because the scythe was just so expensive like okay we can't really use this in everywhere so we're just gonna deal with our shittier weapon nowadays I feel like people just use the very best because generally it's pretty cheap so well yeah there's, there's no one who doesn't there's no one who doesn't use existing abyss like scythe or, or shadow of course yeah. yeah but i think there's it's probably a case where the the further we get along and the more that we develop the end game like that the you know it's, it's like a, it's like a, a a wealth gap basically that keeps on growing and if you're in there and you have these items and they're strong and you can farm the high-end content you're increasing that weight that that wealth gap more and more and more um and if anything personally i think it's better to decrease that and, and bring people balancing, up to the same level. Balancing around the economy is just kind of weird and dangerous too. Like Scythe is not expensive <clears throat> to use anymore, really. Like blood runes are coming no. down like a hundred GP. So yeah. if, if you bounce around that, it's kind of like volatile because the economy is volatile. So it's like the I major the the big thing I'm getting at here is like if if all players have the same items, if you just eliminate the wealth gap elim immediately and give all players bis gear, then it becomes a skill gap thing for whether the content is too difficult for you or not too difficult. And it's a big reason why, at least in old school, you find players hating on the HLC. And a lot of videos that you make or I put out, people are just like, you're doing Musper in max gear and max stats and claiming it's a mid-level boss. It's an endgame boss. And it's like, <laughs> it's no, you, you know you know they're wrong because it's, it's not, and even the devs will tell you and anyone will tell you. But that's how people perceive it because they don't have that GP and they, 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 they don't see it that way. And 
in other games, competitive games, take anything you want, CSGO may be a good example, you are on the same playing field, you have the same weapons, and therefore people can't complain that it's a wealth gap. They can't complain you're just like, you have money and it's okay for you. And that goes a long way. Um, I'm not like advocating immediately kill this wealth gap, but uh, preventing that from separating further, I think is probably a good thing in terms of how high level players are viewed and also for allowing people to accept that high level content is a fun thing and a good thing for them because they can actually do it if they're good enough as opposed to I'll never do it I don't have a scythe and can't afford one mm. slight thing but I can't do Inferno I don't have a T-Bow it's impossible right yeah right eliminating that goes a long way though to closing player skill and opinions on it I don't know I don't know if I fully agree with um, kind of like el eliminating the wealth gap Exactly. I feel like this game. I don't know. I it's, feel like it, if, if it's you're... a fundamental piece of main account gameplay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't. I don't think you should like eliminate it, but I don't think we should increase it either. Is what I mean. I just feel like a and doing something like charges and weapons does that. Well, the the problem is, is if we don't do that, then every weapon just completely goes to garbage when a new weapon comes out. I feel like the future yeah. of weapons needs to have heavy, heavy costs if they're going to be more powerful than the next iteration. Is this like pushing into sort of power creep then? How old stuff is getting killed if new stuff comes out? Yeah, pretty because, much. Because the, the discussion on this is, is crazy in terms of where you can go to solve that. A lot of other games, just they do that. They wipe out previous bits and give you new bits. But old school, having the economy as it is, you can't get away with it, right? Yeah. Um, and it's like, there, there are great ways to do this. I just one example that, that seems to work quite well. If you tier all existing weaponry under tier one, all existing weaponry, weaponry is now tier one, and you release tier two content in whatever format, this content's much harder, and tier one weaponry does like reduced damage against it. But when you get tier two weaponry, then all tier two weaponry is effective at tier two content. And now you're not eliminating the use of T1 items because it applies to T1 content. So you, you can power creep stuff and you can you can introduce new strong items that are that's suitable a, in their own areas. That's a RuneScape 3 method, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, 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 all, lots of games take from this. So there are ways to do it that work just fine. I don't think it's necessarily going to devalue what we have by sort of embracing that we can have stronger stuff. But you also have to have, an, in that example, you have to have an adjustment to the content. And that's kind of a big one as well, I think. Uh, it's just to say there are methods. I'm going to take just a 20 second break. There's a huge spider on my floor and I'm going to squish it real quick. <laughs> no, <laughs> RIP Sarachnus. Little Buzzick. I know Sebe hates his spiders. I've seen his, I've seen his sub emote thing. I'm glad <laughs> I had my slippers on. That thing was massive. Holy crap. Okay. I'm Why back. do you always get big spiders? I, it's Oregon. It's something about Oregon. There's just huge spiders randomly. I hope its babies have leaked out. <laughs> oh God! Don't 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 say that. All right. Yeah. Okay. So no monkey. You play RS. You you used to play RS. You don't really play RS three anymore, right? But I, you at I least played RS three until 2017, and I quit and came to this game the same week uh, Fossil Island came out. Okay. So what does RS3 do well? It seems to be a recurring theme in your videos of talking about like the good things that RS3 does and what they um, actually yeah, so do right. So they don't have poles over there. So they have complete like freedom for better and worse. They added microtransactions and lots of dailies and problems, but also they <laughs> kind of are free to like do whatever they want. Most of the player base in that game is like maxed. So it's almost entirely high levels. So a lot of the content they make is high level content. They had loads and loads of bosses. Um, they have a lot of like big solo raid bosses. Um, a lot of those have enraged mechanics where they scale in difficulty, like Telos and Archglacier. Um, I, I talked about it a lot in the video, but they just add a lot of PVM content just because the player base like eats that up. There, there's like a lot more people into it. Okay. Um, yeah, so what what exactly is good about Telos? You say Telos is like your favorite boss over there? Telos is my favorite boss, period. Okay, um, what, why is that? Why is it so good? Uh, so the way Telos works, it, it's his loot mechanics that are cool. Uh, Telos, um, every you, you kill a Telos, it teleports you back to the top in front of a chest. It shows you what's in the chest. You have an option. You can now just pull the loot out of the chest and go on your merry way. Um, you can also leave the loot in the chest and choose to do another kill. You can go bank in between. There's no there's no stress on time. 
but you can choose to do another kill that leaves your loot in the chest. It rolls to make the boss harder, a, a random like amount of extra difficulty, and then you can go do it again. So you get a a loot multiplier based on the difficulty and whatever's in the chest. And you can repeat this process up to 200 times. So people do things called 200 kill streaks over there, where they will kill a boss 200 times in a row, risking the loot in the chest. Um, there's really nothing in this game that like inherently has risk. I, I think the riskiest content is like Toa because you lose like 500k, but there's not really any <laughs> risk. So Toa, Toa, uh, Telos is really, really cool. I, I'd like to see something like that that adds some risk. Speaking of yeah. a risk, what do you guys think about... Uh, there's always talk of people... I'm in full disagreement, by the way. But what do you guys think about getting getting the uh, old death mechanics back or something similar oh, to man. what, what no. they used to have? No. Hilar uh -huh. Hilarious, but no. Hilarious, but no. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I need to bring it up, though, because it seems like there's always like this recurring wave of people thinking that's the way to solve the well, problem the, the, there's a recurring wave of people who are nostalgic about the game and how they used to have fun and how the mechanics used to be and they want it back but that doesn't mean those mechanics were good or useful or healthy no. for the game. <laughs> that's what's one of those i'm afraid uh, uh, you best... know don't get me wrong like hilarious but bad <laughs> the best ways to add risk are either that with the risking the loot you've already gotten or um like what they've done with the orbs where it's like risking a big entry cost and then like the fear of if you'll finish the kill off or not those are like the two like obvious ways to do risk that isn't risking bills in uh your gear that you've obtained <laughs> yeah i actually am a huge fan i think of that like telos mechanic where wait are you able to see the loot and yeah, then it tells you. okay oh wow so you okay. can choose to continue or not yep. okay and that's the that would be the way to do it right it shouldn't be hidden you should know what you're risking oh i love that yeah. like that like yeah, dichotomy should. of okay if i should continue or not i'm risking a lot damn yeah, yeah definitely they, the best I'm, I'm surprised they, 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 they nailed heard. the system I'm surprised they haven't they released know. something like that already in old school. Yeah, I'm pushing so hard right now for Blue Inferno, the the game jam Blue project. Blue Inferno would be the to, perfect to, place to put to it, have in Rage, right? It's it's yeah. like the content is maybe eight, anywhere from like eight to ten minutes to do twelve waves, increasing difficulty throughout the waves, and then you have this chance to risk it all and just make more and more and more. It, it's the perfect content. Mm -hmm. if, if there's one dream for like next year it's for that to come out with it rage incredible yeah yeah okay so how would the drops work it would would it so it would drop new best in slot gear or are you thinking of like an untradeable cape like an infernal cape or something they want uh untradeable well their, their original suggestion was an untradeable mage cape that was best in slot mm -hmm. but in terms of the actual loot of course it has to be it actually has to be good gp value or it has to be some like insanely useful thing like a vial of blood equivalent for a scythe that you get from there. But, you know. Telos dropped all best in slot weapons, so that's kind of mm -hmm. hard to... Like, it's pretty obvious why he's profitable. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, if they ever do come out with Blue Inferno, that, I mean, that definitely will be the place where they release it. What, what is it called? Enrage Mechanic? Is that just pretty much what it's they called? They call it Enrage, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there. So we talked about Osmumpton's Fang. What is the problem with the Light Bearer Ring? I'll start with you, No Monkey. It's it, it's really really good. I I paid two hundred mil for it originally, and I was perfectly happy paying that. I would have paid like five hundred mil, I think. Like, no questions asked. That thing is so good. It's it's the best ring to wear if you are not. So your good spec weapons are defense training, so like hammer and BGS, and then like ZCB. So if you are ever using melee or ranged um, and you're meleeing without a scythe where the max it really matters, like Berserker Ring, like if you're using Fang and the max it's don't really matter, Light Bear is best. If you're ever ranging, Light Bear is best because all you get is accuracy out of a ring. Even the new ring barely gives max hits yeah. usually. It's not even good enough to make up for ZCB. Um, and if you're maging, you definitely want Light Bear because all they have is Sears Ring. Uh, there's no good rings for mage and there's no good spec weapons unless you're not specking like at all with mage which isn't really a thing spec weapons are just so strong they're so so uh, kirby was calcing um the new mage ring in toa i think it gets four max hits there jesus um, even with the four max hits light bear is still better in aka for him because zcb is so strong like the, the <laughs> double zcb shit. specs is still better than using the mage ring that's more so a toa problem because well not, not necessarily but like because you have the the blue path as well it compounds yeah. the effect. It's just oh, stupid yeah. the amount of specs yeah. you get out. It's yeah. less of a problem elsewhere, but it's still prevalent. 
Okay. Yeah. And then across all the powers of light bear power, can, can you know imagine the fact that it's three mil or like two and a half or something, and probably going down. It's not good, and it's an even bigger problem because it's a ring that at low level you don't have any spec weapons until you get to dragon. You don't own a spec weapon, and you would barely use it, and you wouldn't care. So it's a problem for the high level players, and this ring is just gonna like, not like crash crash, but it's gonna go to like five hundred k next year, because anyone who's anyone who does content has one. And then anyone who's like below that content doesn't need one. It's and not like a berserker ring you get used to utility from early on. You just you have no use. Mm -hmm. So it's even capped to the high level of the game. Damn. Yeah, and like every single person's TOA log, they have like twenty plus rings on there, so that's not looking yeah. too good either. And they're not like prayer scrolls from Cox where they get incinerated once you've used them. They're just always you just have floating it. around. Everybody you know? has one. Uh so what would you what would you recommend? them doing it or is it just uh, i don't know i'm i'm not a fan of saying it's too late for anything obviously it's probably too late but <laughs> what i think it's a shame solutions? they didn't they didn't make them rare I, not just okay people say like with fang too like fang is too cheap they were saying and they were always like oh we need to swap the like rarity of these like purples at toa yeah. and it's like the purples in general are too common like Masori's worth nothing, Light Bear is worth nothing, Fang is worth nothing. The only thing worth anything is the Shadow because it's just so good. Everybody needs it, and it's also the rarest thing. Yeah, yeah. And the, the annoying part is they have all the systems in play to make it work effectively if they were to lock it behind higher levels or make mm -hmm. it rarer. And the reason for this is because you you have to balance the if if you want items to maintain a stable value, you, of course you have to have the supply and the demand. So you have to balance the rarity, the supply against the demand, which is the amount of players entering the HLC and finding a use for the ring or getting the levels to make use in some way. And it's like, if, if currently it's it's too cheap and then all the high level players uh, need one, but no one low level. And it's like, they have this system to take shit out of the game with the G, right? So items over time, whichever ones they choose to balance them from can be removed. Um, and you can't just like delete every other life bearer because it's a bit too much. I, I compare it but, to like, your ship is sinking, right? And you're like, how do we mm -hmm. stop it from sinking? Uh, the GE tax is bailing. That's like bailing the water out of the ship. This is a good like, analogy. That kind of that, that helps. It, it can help. Like if it's a small leak, that can help. That can that can that can get you to port. But like plugging the holes is fixing the drop rates. That's that's what they needed to do. But they a really good analogy. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, uh, let me ask. Like, what 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 if they had made it so? light bearers only have a certain amount of charges like a certain amount of it usage it, it or whatever helps and then because they it, disintegrate and it disintegrate? helps because it, incre it increases demand significantly so it helps i mean the other obvious item here is a cult right it's the same both yeah it's like yeah. it's just too easy to obtain and therefore if it was rarer at least the amount of players coming into endgame would balance the amount that they drop but it's not yeah, so 10%. The, all, any any item in that position, yeah, any item in that position is like subject to that problem. The question is maybe one more of like how much should it actually cost, which is very subjective, but probably the more interesting talking point as far as how do you, you know, what, what, at what point do you balance these two? And the second part of this is okay, if we agree light bearer is a hundred mil item, how the fuck do you take it from two and a half mil to a hundred mil reasonably without it first being like heavily manipulated ahead of time? And without causing like major disruption and major angriness from people, mm -hmm. you can't. And that's the yeah. position we're in. So do you think part of this is actually now I'm, I'm not going to say accessibility is bad, but when you're releasing a brand new end game raid, should it be accessible to every player day one? <laughs> There's that's, nothing that's there's the nothing concern. wrong with having those difficulties. The problem is the rates at the low levels. Like a 150 Tewa is a higher rate than a normal chambers for a purple. Mm. Like that's not that's not fine. That's not okay. No. I, I don't <laughs> If we're talking exclusively like accessibility balance, TOB has nailed it right now. After yeah. the changes to after the changes to entry mode were made, and more so recently, entry mode is the perfect place to get experience, and you don't get much loot, but you get something. And I think you might even get vials of blood now from entry mode, something like that. You do. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So so it's 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 enough to give players a taste, and also get some unique that isn't game breaking. They're not they're not printing eighty mil of onyx while their bank is two mil, you know. But TOA just like ignores this principle. Um, like we all agree, it, it it kind of ignores it and it's not done well. Maybe the question is like, why? How did this come to be? Because mm. this is more so about 
how they chose to develop it and and why it ended up like that, which also ties into like the video on why you think the Dragex maybe is making these wrong decisions, right? So, mm -hmm. I guess I'll start it with like saying, I think there are because there are only three raids, and that's not a very large sample size to work with, and they've been developing sort of their techniques for working on raids um, ever since Chambers was a good success, and they they realized Tob wasn't successful internally, so they had to change it up, and the biggest biggest problem with TOA that they, they took on was it's too much, especially with invocations and the size of the teams from literal 1 to 8. Um, they know from Chambers, like, going to 100 is silly. They know from Tob that maybe people want a bit more than 5, but in combination with everything they had to work on, TOA was too much to handle, and I think it was, firstly, not enough development time, too strict a deadline, and thirdly, not enough, times, not enough time allocated after, after the release to go yes. back and patch stuff. Which was basically a two month, uh, sorry, a two week window where they were actively fixing things, and then it stopped, dead. Mm. Yeah. And those are the those are the fundamental problems internally that I think need to, they I th and I think they are to an extent aware of it, but those are the major problems that I see. Now, to carry on with this, like if if raids four comes out and the same problems are there, I'll be the, I'll be quite disappointed, and that's maybe the the difference is like I I'm quite. Except I'm I'm quite comfortable accepting that they've learned those things and raids four won't have that problem. And maybe maybe there's a bit of a disagreement. I don't know. What do you think? Uh Because Jagex learning from mistakes is, you know, fifty fifty. But well, sorry, learning from mistakes yeah. is great. I, I just think it's unacceptable yeah. to leave it in the state it's in. I they are coming back mm -hmm. and doing um another uh TOA QOL, so I'm really hoping they finally do fix a lot of these issues, but not the drop rates, though. No. I feel like it's a shame they left it in the state it's in. Um, a lot of the changes they were making, like, early on in release were, for everything they fixed, they'd add, like, a new problem. Like, almost almost every single time. They were adding new... Oh, man. Akka kept having issues added where they'd, like, change the position of, like, the DPS skip. they just, like, keep breaking something in every single room for some reason. Mm. Um, and then that would stay that way for a couple weeks. It was just like, man... They dropped the ball so, like early, for sure. Yeah, it's it's so tricky when ultimately it comes down to spaghetti code for a lot of this as well, right? Like, yeah, you sure. have one problem, you change one thing, and something else breaks. And maybe that's not something that can actually be solved internally because that's just what they're working with. Those are the tools they're given, and that's not getting an update. I think the engine guys are doing some good work, but it's not enough to to counteract the like twenty year old system they're with. Yeah. Um. And honestly, a lot of a lot of existing problems that we have, whether it be the the style of content, the the quantity, uh, the quality, uh, the mechanics at play, that all comes down to engine and limitation based on engine, which I don't know if we can actually flame them for or or, or like hold them accountable for. I at the I end don't, of the day, I don't program. I don't know their engine. I don't know any of their code, so I can't really just assume the best. The best thing I can do as a player is be like, hey, I don't like this thing. Um, and give that to them. That's pretty much the yeah. best I can do. I can't assume the best or the worst. I don't I don't flame any of the devs. I'm never like, oh, this dev is doing this thing wrong. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what they're doing internally. All I can say is, hey, there's a problem here. That's that's the best I can do, and that's what I assume. Sure. Yeah, it's uh it's tough. So they actually did come out with some TOA quality of life that was in that latest blog or whatever. And one of the really nice changes, I think, is the volatile monkeys oh that's really cool exploding yeah, suggested that a long time mm -hmm. yeah that's amazing and they're one-shotting them guaranteed that's they also made it so thralls don't um push aka shadow around which is gonna be really really nice oh, that's super annoying that but would be yep that's nice that's really nice there's other issues than that i have a big list of issues but i'm <laughs> like also working on those so <laughs> i have a list of around 50 problems with the raids so <laughs> there hey, there's a question yeah, yeah no. well here let me just let me just say this one thing so this is something that kind of comes up i see on twitter is people want the pillar in the middle of the monkey room gone what are your guys' thoughts on that i don't want it gone personally i th i think that you can learn to play around it and it also has its use to add depth in the fact that you can trap monkeys selectively i think and it that's also a generally good thing i think with all of the it's going to help they could make mm. it so you could shoot over it. I like that a thing exists in the middle that you can um, stack things with. Like, you can be really smart about it and stack things to chin. Um, uh, 
it adds some depth, but it's annoying, right? Mm -hmm. like, I think if you could just shoot over it, that's like ideal. Like as long as there's a place where you can trap things still, that's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a tricky, it's a tricky one, yeah. Yeah. Hit, go, go, cycling back a little bit. Um, there's a list of like 50 issues at TOA, right? These are all genuine issues, fair play. But the question is, is it worthwhile for them to take the time to fix them? And if so, would it may not would it not be the case perhaps that that time is better spent on new content? Because that's a lot of issues, and each one takes not just the dev to go in and try and fix it and make sure it's right, but also the QA, potentially sometimes the art team to get involved. And at the end of the day, they work at the pace of the slowest link on the team, whatever uh, that they is. They shouldn't. They shouldn't need the art team to fix. They're no, they're maybe like maybe that's an exaggeration, bugs. but yeah, yeah. Uh, whether they should work on new things. I don't know. I, again, I don't know what they're like internally. I'm, I'm giving well, my perspective, like sure, on issues fine. and things. So I can try filling a thing or two. I've got a, a decent idea, but like, okay, the way I see it is, if you have the major dev team that works on TOA, yeah, those guys are also responsible for fixing the bugs that end up arising there. And if you want to take the likes of, let's say, just Arcane. Sorry, Arcana, I'm putting you in the in the fire firing line here. But like, let's say Arcane gets taken <laughs> in. <laughs> let's say Arcane gets taken in, and he's like. Um, there's 50 bugs that Noma sent me to do, and I'm going to go fix all these. That might well mean we don't get the likes of Blue Inferno for an extended period. And the knock-on effect can continue throughout all these bits of content. I don't think all of them are equal priority either. I'm just like, these are all issues. The, yeah. the, the fixing the monkey room is huge, and the, the Aka Thrall thing is huge. Those are like incredibly big changes. There's a couple other like major things I'd like to see change, just like... Aka being completely random when he switches is really annoying. There's a couple like annoying things that would be like massive. Just the the like handful of bugs I've got that like you can't mage jugs if that takes them a lot of dev time. Then like who cares? But like right. those are the major things. And on top of that, do you think that most of these things are things that affect high level players or all players? Because some some definitely affect all of us, but a few of them probably the average player doesn't give a shit about. Then the question is, uh, is it worth the it to fix it for of the things, small players? A big chunk of it is things that affect you like once every like 20 raid. You know, yeah. it's not like a, a massive deal. It's comprehensive. It's it's everything. It's everything I've encountered. So what about those very specific specific issues that do affect HLC members? I'm trying to think of a couple. I'm sure there are I'm sure there are a few. Um, um Do those basically have a priority is the question then? There's not many that are specific to, like, me. I'm trying to think. Yeah. May, there may just not be some good examples, in which case it's fine. No, there's nothing I want changed specifically for me, I don't think. Besides, like, obviously I'd love for them to add, like, depth and invocations to the raid, but that's, like, obvious, like, heavy dev time. Like, maybe that is better spent on a new raid, I don't know. Yeah. But I can always dream that, oh, they'll add, they'll add this, like, invocation that adds a bunch of stuff, and then, like... Insanity will actually be hard. This is all like <laughs> one tick, dream, one but... tick insanity, one tick random insanity. <laughs> you know, I, I'm down for it, but yeah, I, th those kind of things I do think are, are probably better spent elsewhere, purely to have new content to deal with. Because the the new stuff is always more interesting than like making old stuff revamped, I guess. But hey, okay. Uh, let's talk about the new awakened bosses that came out with Desert Treasure Two. So. Obviously, four new variants. They came out just within a week. I was like, what the hell? I thought this was going to take months. <laughs> like, yeah. They just they, came they, out. They boogied that out. Oh, man. Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> crazy. I, I, I was sure they were working on them, like, previously. Like, the, the tone of discussion and, like, the way they were approaching it was like, yeah, we got these things ready. We're going to rock them, like, on the day of release. And I, and I, I had thought that they were going to do it on a day of release. Mm. And so it was, like, surprising to me they weren't going to. I was like, oh, what's up with this? And then obviously yeah. two days after, it's like, you bastards, you had it in here all along. <laughs> yeah, that was so. really crazy. And uh, it, what's th the most surprising thing is like, I don't even think they had enough data for like, just to even know what the difficulty was for the normal variants. And then they just instantly um, come out with the Awakened. They did a lot of playtesting. And yeah. even the, I, I know you mentioned this, but actually the Awakened bosses, each of them was killed at least once by a JMO. Mod, Mod mm -hmm. Nox actually killed Leviathan. Um, and Nox I think... Machine. Nox is insane, yeah. Um, <laughs> but the, the team definitely, and in fact, he was brought on from player support to try and do some of those testings in particular. That was like one of the main reasons, I think, if he said that. I think he said that. So it's nice to know they're putting like players in that position, at least, and especially internally, not just like average us playtesters. Yeah. So, so are you guys satisfied with the difficulty? 
I love Leviathan. I adore Leviathan. Leviathan's like an amazing addition. That shit's so hard. I was watching you for like a couple oh, hours man. last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so brutal. The end is so insane too. The thing, that, the thing yeah. they did with all the Awakened bosses, they all are like, they're pretty similar to the normal one at the beginning and then they like ramp up. Usually at like half health, they have some kind of mechanic they add or something. Leviathan's just great because you have the boulders you're stacking through the whole fight and you're just trying to keep it like as perfectly stacked as possible for that end bit. Just because that end bit is so, so hard. The one trick like career switching while moving, while avoiding a tornado, while also staying inside an orb while still attacking. It's just like... Uh. Yeah, and there's <laughs> things falling all around you as well. Oh, man. Yeah, and you're also DPS checked because rocks are falling. Yeah, you uh, have to kill them fast enough. To be honest, like that's one of those things where like I, I see the end and I actually think that's a bit too difficult. And I don't really say that lightly. I think the reason it's too difficult is because of the falling stuff. Because like... I disagree. I don't know, man. I, I think I think they pushed it just a little bit too far where it literally is like you can kind of get RNG'd in a way. Technically, you can't get RNG'd, but like you would have to do like three clicks and a tick very precisely to actually be dodging falling things on top of staying in this little three by three. Uh, they have a long indicator. Like if you're, yeah. it's just a lot to keep up with. Like yeah, seeing the rocks falling. I, I did manage a perfect um, end bit. Like I have done it damageless. I didn't get by rock or any prayer. But it's was that possible. orange? Did did you actually like dodge I mean, you could, some of the? You things? could argue I got lucky. I had a lot of like one tick prayers, which is back and forth, like him jatting me. So yeah. Well, I'll, I'll make the argument now okay. that Leviathan Awakened is consistent, and tomorrow I'm going to prove it by doing three kills in a row in the same minimum <laughs> three. Okay. Okay. I, I nearly consistent. got two today, but like I'll, I'll happily do three tomorrow in a row. Yeah. I I definitely agree. It is consistent. It's one of those things where it's it. At, it's just the, that ending part seems like you have to have unbelievable click action. Like if you were to get unlucky, this is what I'm saying. It's like if you were to get unlucky with some of those falling rocks, like it's going to be a bitch. Like you can just have a run where there's a few things in your path and you're just not going to be able to click precisely. I was, getting, um, I was getting kind of frustrated because uh, you take a bunch. When you when you send that last bit with the orb, um, the... the prayers damage you if you're outside the orb mm -hmm. and the orbs hitbox isn't available for like four ticks but they still chip you mm. so the issue i was running into is i was sending it and i take maybe like four orbs which damage you like 60 damage so you're just down 60 health at the beginning i was getting really frustrated because i was like how do you deal with this then i find out you can trap the tornado so it's just like you go to the opposite side you trap the tornado when it's close to 20 percent, and then you send it you do a shadow barrage from there go to the other side right next to the right next to the orb hit him procs Prox the orb, he's not attacking you, and you avoid the chip damage. It's completely avoidable. You okay. just have to be very, very smart about what you're doing. You have to not rag the spot where you can hide the tornado. You just have to be intelligent about what you're doing. It's so good. <laughs> it's, 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 so a, it's good. a There's a huge amount of tactics and method and yes. control that go into the pre-enrage part to make the enrage good. That shit's and it's insane. That's, yeah. But, but the thing is, that's really learnable. Um, yep. Like, on day one of Awakened Bosses, I was like... By the time I was done, I was like, "There's going to be 200 people with a with with heart with a blood torpor by the end of the year," and of course, on the second day, there's like 500 kills of each boss. So I'm just like, I'm <laughs> eating my words immediately. Um, this goes to show a few things. Firstly, like, there's probably about 200 people, maybe 300 now with blood torpor, maybe. Um, yeah. Legitimately, let's hope there's like 100. But hey, um, anyway, it's more like the fact the fact that player skill is is just insane, and there are players that can do this, and not just a small amount either. Like hundreds of players can do this. And also the fact that the day one is always a bit tricky. You don't quite know how difficult it truly is and how much of the difficulty is to be made up with methods and made up with tactics and made up with, like, not player skill, but methods that emerge over the next few days. And now I'm saying that, like, I, I thought I thought initially Leviathan was practically impossible outside of maybe, like, a 1 in 10. And now I'm just like, it's consistent. I can do three kills in a yeah. row. It's, it's silly, but that's the game we play. Um, and so much of it goes into method. Yep. It's... It says a lot about maybe new content that could be released that's even harder that we can't do for not just 10 hours, but like a month. And maybe we do need to figure out the methods to get there, but it's still possible within player skill. Um, but there's there's the two opposing, not two opposing, but two things that work together to like make the kill possible. That's so interesting, honestly. No, I, th I think it is. And it, what is cool is like, yeah, these things are completely solved within a month. Like it, within a month, there's going to be some no monkey guide or Adikon guide that's just like 
tells you exactly what to do at the Leviathan Awaken thing. Like exactly yeah. what to do to set yourself up for perfect success. Practically where, within a week. Yeah. 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 And there's always like new things that come out. It's like, oh, this is a new tech that's going to make it even easier, which is what I like. Um, so what are your guys' thoughts on the Awakened Orb mechanic? Is that healthy? Um, yes. Just getting orbs and paying for attempts? It's money is one of those things that's like as a main like ignoring the Iron Man for a moment. Money money on a main account matters. And whether you like it or not, a lot of your time spent on a main is about making money. Yeah. So having to choose how you use it, what items you buy, where you spend it, if you think Blood Torver is worth it at your current budget and bank value, that's an interesting choice to be made. Um and it also adds GP to the bosses that players who don't want to do awakens can benefit from. So maybe it's not the perfect solution, but it's not a bad one. It's interesting enough and plays into standard old school mechanics. Yeah. Or gameplay. What about for Iron Man? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's cool for Irons as well. I and mean, it's just like one of those things where it's just difficult. Like you're going to have to grind a lot harder. It's yeah. frustrating no, that I have to. Um, I, I've been doing Leviathan world record attempts. It's really frustrating that I, um, I've done the thing. And now every time I want to attempt it, it's like. I've got to pay three and a half mil every time I go inside. Mm -hmm. I wish there was a solution to that. Arcane said in the Q&A something like, uh, what was it? He's like, I don't think these uh, attempts, or I don't think these kills would hold up after 100, so I don't think it's, um, I don't know exactly what the quote was. But he said it, they wouldn't hold up over time, and he's like, no, we don't need to fix that. Just like, oh man. The, you, like the orb price and stuff. He was actually he was in stream today yeah. saying he was he was surprised about the price of the orbs. And I was like, yeah, same. I mean they're, well, they're this still is the going thing up. With they're, the, they're nearly four mil. This is the thing with the orbs, um, because you would think people would stop doing it after you get um Blood Torva, but they don't stop doing it. Like you it's such a good fight. Like people yeah. go back in and yeah. they try it again. So you would you would think, oh, they, they spend a bunch of orbs and then they stop doing it. But there's constant they're constantly draining those out. It's getting more and more accessible, and more and more people are going, oh, I think I can do this, and they're coming in and spending their orbs. In the same time, there's less and less people doing the new bosses. The hype is slowly dying down. So there's less and less people getting orbs, and there's more and more people using orbs. So people are like, oh, they'll go down probably pretty quickly. That's not what's happening. Okay, so what if about... They don't go... yeah, sorry, if, if they don't go down, is that what... maybe that's one of those things that closes that wealth gap a little bit. It, it's a system that does that, albeit... Just for like maybe a couple of players, but that's another reason why I think it's probably okay. I, I get it's frustrating as someone who wants. I mean, I want to do it all the time, right? But like, I get the frustration, but I think it's still a healthy thing for the game because of that. This is just a curious point. I'm just gonna bring up and just let me know because yeah. mm -hmm. personally, I think it's fine the way it is. But I want to just bring this up. So, what if you got an untradeable awakened orb after completing an awakened boss that's yours to go in again for free? That's a sick idea. <laughs> yeah. It's good, and they should do that. But the issue is that the rates are higher, and I don't know how much higher. So that's why yeah. they haven't... That's their issue they're having. They haven't okay. done anything because the rates are higher. I Honestly, maybe they should just remove the higher rates. I don't know. Dude, because you still get, like, garbage loot. I, I killed Leviathan, like, five times, and I think I made a total of, like, 50K. Like, I got oh, no, I got 90 Onyx Bolt tips once. Okay, that was decent. That's so good. I made maybe I a mil. I got pet on two pet KCs. Is good. So. We take pet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm actually already going to backtrack. So what if they don't do that thing, which I just said, which is have an untradeable awaken orb for completing an awaken boss? But what if it's just the same as it is, but the rates are actually significantly higher in the awaken versions? But you have to pay for that attempt. That would be sick too. Like, wouldn't that just be the way to do it? I mean, isn't that just the most fair? That's the risk versus reward. Yeah, Carlos that's gives. literally risk versus that's reward the right there. That's the same thing. It's a bit in a scary different because way, and it's cool. I, I think the only bad thing about it is that it, 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 if you go that route, now it drops a cosmetic and people want to get the cosmetic and are now fucked because of the orb price, and that's not so fun. Um, I if think you remove but, Blood Torba, then but, it would be making well, more sense to me. Okay, I think so you the orbs both, then. So why don't you make it an untradeable orb you get back and it's profitable? So now it's like if you're consistent, you get your orb back and you make some more money. You don't make it so high that it's like giving you back the price of the orb, but if you're good enough to get the orb back consistently, you're still maintaining. I'm actually actually 
thinking it's better if you don't get any orb. So it's constantly that risk versus reward, and you it's, are paying. It's for cool. It. It's cool to be putting so much money into a kill and have it return that yeah. much back. But yeah. it's like scary for them to design around. So I don't know. It's a tricky one. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I just gotta say, like, it's been a week. I mean, the orbs are expensive right now, but look five months from now it's just it's gonna be way cheaper yeah we we don't know is the answer yeah. this this is one of those topics that in yeah. three four five months it'll be really interesting in hindsight we'll sound dumb probably yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been be a, it's wrong. been a literal yeah. week like we, it, we yeah nothing has happened so all, far all in i've the seen is day one when you would think them they'd be at their highest they were 2.5 mil and then the next day they were 3.5 the entire day <laughs> so that's worrying to me but well, I'm, once players, I, that was because people thought it was too hard, I think. Watching people do it maybe. was like ridiculous. And now people realize it's actually quite obtainable. And again, those methods have come out. That's why yeah. people yeah. are like, oh, yeah. I can do it. I'm going to buy the orbs. Uh, I wish Blood Torva was darker. It's too gray. <laughs> I thought it was going to be darker. It looked really dark in the blogs. And then when I actually see it in game, I'm like, oh, that's. Daniel Screen Bright everything, man. Yeah, I, guess, I, guess, I guess I do have to. But the thing is, <laughs> yeah. like, that's what Black Graceful used to look like. It was that gray, and then they make, actually made it black. I wish they would do the same thing with Blood Torva. Just make it a little bit darker. Just a little I, bit. I don't mind. I, I'd like it either way. I'm happy as is. But yeah, yeah, I, I'd, I'd support a more cool version you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, let's talk about the boosting, buying, and selling of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, really quick. I've been going yeah. for world record pretty clearly bought it or uh auto prayed for so this is the thing with the leviathan um you have the fight goes you do damage you can shadow barrage get behind him do an attack and then he does a special attack uh it's either lightning or boulders uh boulders you lose ticks doing um because you can't shoot every single tick um and lightning has a huge damage reduction i think it's 40 percent damage reduction or something ruby bolts only hit 73 instead of 110. Oh, yeah. So, as a human being, I'm forced to do that because <laughs> he gets so fast. He has he's one tick attack speed with a one tick indicator while a tornado is chasing you. I don't think a human being can keep up with that. Maybe in the future somebody will manage, but there's people doing their first awakened Leviathan kills with only thralls with no shadow barrage, and it's like. So if you if you don't ever have to shadow barrage, you not only don't lose the ticks casting it and then running around to his back. You also don't have to deal with the damage reduction. You just have an inherent advantage because you're a robot. Yep. Uh, really hoping they, they ban. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure World Record is auto prayed. I'm not 100% certain, but. I, I, I am 100% certain. Okay. And, so, I, I, and there's an evidence thing going around for it. So, yeah. The, okay, the, second, the second place guy slash the record holder. Um, yeah. Or maybe, maybe he's not the record. It doesn't matter. The point is, the record is clearly cliented. Yeah. But yeah. I think what they're doing is, much like Infernal Capes, they wait for it a little bit, they get some data, they assess it, and then they ban wave. I'm sure and they're collecting, all, and, yeah. There's no and that's probably, that's probably what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah, but, but that's um, unfortunate, because that would, yeah. That, uh, cheating Leviathan is the, yeah, it's the it most, completely like, makes it easy. It's <laughs> the most incentivized yeah. boss to do it at. It just <laughs> solves the whole thing. Like, exactly. And it's the most, and it's the current most prestigious thing. It's, it's, yes. yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As yeah. far as like the um, the buying and selling goes of it, it's for those wondering. I'm not going to quote exact prices, but not in not in money anyway. But it costs approximately 2.3 billion GP to buy to buy Blood Torva right now, and you you can simply go to a service Discord and do it. And I, I I don't recommend it. Don't do it because you're ruining the experience for yourself. <laughs> but the point is, you can and people do, and people have already bought Blood Torva. I don't think we should balance the game around people buying stuff like that. Yep. But it is important to try and prevent them in in as many ways in as many ways as possible. It's it's not good for the game integrity overall. It's um, well, it's it's just not anything people can see as desirable unless you're one of those people who wants to buy it, right? Mm -hmm. But can they do anything about it? No, straight up no. For the same reason they can't do anything about people doing infernal capes for other people. It's essentially a waste of time for them to go and ban them. And if you can even find them in the first place, that is. Yeah. Um, and the resources are better spent elsewhere, maintaining other SL other elements of game integrity, like not a three thousand bot pyramid plunder farm thing. Yep. Um, so it's a shame, and I think they should definitely crack down on it, down it, down on it on release. But ultimately, yeah. it's just part of the game that we should, as 
players ourselves just ignore and you can't balance it. around you can't bad stop actors. It. It's not a thing you can do. Yeah, no. you just have to do your best to to curb the flow. Like, yep, and yeah, no, I mean. I don't know. Generally, you can tell when a guy got it himself. Uh, I feel like <laughs> it's the same thing with like people going into TOB with an Infernal Cape and they have no fucking clue what they're doing. It's just like, I'm not going to just... Like, yes, you can flex your shiny armor at the Grand Exchange or whatever, but like people aren't going to actually respect you when they actually PVM you, with you. <laughs> you can fake your items, but not your skill. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um it is bannable, correct? They just can't really find out. Correct. It's straight botting. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I mean, the, the botting thing, obviously, but but the so, some, someone... I'm, I'm talking about the services. Oh, services. Yeah. yeah. Also bannable. You, you, yeah. Bannable, but how can they find out? Is the question. Yeah. They yeah. There's there was some really interesting discussion about kernel level anti cheat in the streams like the last few days about how maybe they could do something if they had that, and then, like. Whether if people get caught like that, should they just be like hella permed instantly? Should that be the kind of thing? I'm all for perming cheaters in any game, personally. Yeah, but same. having having the ability to recognize that and then also adding stuff like kernel level is is a bit That's scary, scary for too. a lot of people. Yeah, it is a Valorant thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's a whole other topic, but maybe we should avoid that one. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you got a point. Like, there's there's got to be a line drawn where you're permanently banned. Um, I think personally, like ge generally, people think, "Oh, I should, I deserve a two-day ban first, and then whatever happens after is fine." It shouldn't even be two-day bans. Like when you get banned for the first time, it should be like a fucking month. Like just actually sit you down for a while and consider your actions. <laughs> uh, but this is the problem with bans: is there are false bans that happen, and the the perfect system would be them to actually have legitimate player support. That would be amazing. Um, I don't know if they'll ever do that. Probably not. Yeah. It, it's yeah. a huge weak point, but a lot of the support requests that go through are from botters trying to regain access to bot accounts. How, how the hell they can tell legitimate players from people trying to access a bot account again is incredibly hard. Especially yeah. with chat GPT to say, like, write the best appeal ever for me. Yeah. <laughs> Copy paste. Guaranteed 100% <laughs> success rate. <laughs> yep. Holy shit. Yeah. One of those things where, like, I don't actually think they would benefit much from more player support, despite wanting it. I, I just don't know if they can ever get to a place where it's really useful. Maybe, maybe more people to go through more requests, but like, if they're handling the current flow rate, what's more to it, right? If they can't do a better job and there's not much, not much they can improve on, mm -hmm. maybe it just has to remain shit. That's a bit of a shame. I mean. I don't know. I disagree with it. Like, I understand that's the easiest route. The hard route would be to actually invest money into player support and actually have, like, legit investigations. And when and when you've abused that, like, they're just like, okay, you're you're permanently banned. Like, if, if you abuse the report thing, like, if you knowingly cheated and then you're saying, like, you didn't, they'll just ignore your ass. Yeah, um, but I think the, the problem with that is the proof, the proof level, right? Yeah. Yeah, again, it's, this is it's all not so, resources and money, which they're not yeah. willing to invest. And then even if you do want to go that route, it's the kernel problem and all that. But yeah, it's a really tricky one, that one. That's, that's a huge, huge conversation. And I'm, I'm sure they've had it internally. But also, kernel dev is like insane amounts of money per year. Like insane, insane. The whole uh, fucking yeah. dev team is spent yeah. on a kernel dev or something. I, what if... Okay, yeah. imagine this. Like imagine a perm ban was two years so there actually is no such thing as perm bans it's just you're banned for two years like sit the fuck down <laughs> so you actually can't even like really cry that much because you're gonna eventually get your account ban backed <laughs> but you're just like actually pretty much permed i don't know because in that in that case like because most of the time like if you get a severe punishment like that like you're gonna change your ways like that actually does happen believe it or not um when you've seriously um, like dealt with the consequences, some people will. I don't think the majority of cheaters change their ways much. No, I don't well, it depends so. if they're like doing it um, maliciously or not. I would say somebody that has cheated once and gets caught, they're like, okay, I holy shit, like I'm not going to cheat anymore. But like a in, person that's just maliciously trying to gold farm and shit, obviously they're going to continue. In, in yeah. my experience, running a lot around esports, all varieties, people don't really reform ever. Mm. Yeah, it no, just I haven't it's anybody. not a thing. 
Yeah. I definitely noticed there, there are, reform, to be honest. Some people maybe, but it, it depends what kind of cheating you're doing. Because if you're doing it for like a, exactly. an actual advantage in a competitive game, those guys don't change. That's true. Almost, That's true. almost, almost never. If, if it's someone who's bought gold and wasn't sure about the rules of the game, they're probably not going to do it again. But that's mm -hmm. not the same as maliciously cheating for exactly. advantages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um, okay. So should Blood Torva be a combat achievement? I'm just going down your list. I can take this one. Um, yeah, go for it. Initially, I didn't think so. When it first came out, I, on the first day, much much like how I was saying there were maybe 200 people who'd get it by the end of the year, because of that, I was like, the difficulty's too high. Um, and the reason for this is, like, if you take Inferno, Inferno maybe requires 30% of my current player skill, and I'm, like, a top player. And CAs maybe consists of anywhere from 40 to 60% of my skill to do the tasks. But nothing requires more than, like, 60%. Maybe, maybe one task. And so th things like DT2 Awakened... Leviathan, for example, I needed to put in like 90% of my player skill, 95%. Yeah. And to ask GM players who are at peak, uh, who are peaking at maybe 70 to 80% of my current level, this is maybe sounding incredibly arrogant, but like the point is there are top players. To get GMCA, you don't have to be a top player, you just have to be pretty good. To ask those players to go from where they are, to really push the limits and make it into a top player, to do that seemed a bit excessive. Um, GM doesn't now, really have anything like truly difficult on its own like it's just a lot it's just a comprehensive jack of all trades do you know most of the content for yep. uh Zuck yeah. um, it's a long grind there's no i i i compared leviathan to like harder than a like pillarless inferno or a solo tob i don't know if it actually is it's hard to compare that kind of thing but that's like the kind of tier of difficulty it is so uh, it's, tricky it, because... it's, a, it's a thing that can be solved and it's a short fight so it's like it's probably going to be very much, much easier in maybe two weeks uh, once there's guides and stuff out. So it's kind of hard to say right now. But Yeah. In initially, I was thinking no. And, and nowadays, back to this method thing, I think that instead of it requiring 95% of player skill, it's more like requiring 75% plus 25% of learning a method. Yeah. And, therefore it's, and therefore, it's okay if you put in the time to learn a method. That's actually a good thing. Um, so my view on this has definitely changed. I think I think it could be added, but not a speedrun time, just like a base kill, fine. I'd still like to see like a trim on Zuck Helmet or something, maybe one extra tier above. I'd still think that would be really cool. You put in your things like Pillarless and your things like Solo TOB, um, and then you give it like a trim, maybe longer horns, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That kind of thing can go in there if it's too hard. Ultra Super GM or Mythical Super Mega PM. GM, yeah. Maybe no rewards, <laughs> just like a cool trim on it. Quantum GM, there we go. Oh, it's a total <laughs> screaming. Nuclear. <laughs> mm -hmm. just, you could just one-shot bosses just with a nuke. Um, <laughs> so, well, actually, they do have that in RS3. What's that thing called? One-shot oh, touch darts. Death, oh yeah. My, Jesus yeah. Christ. What? How did that, like... Yeah, that that's what you get when there's no polling system. You get shit like yeah. that. You get the yeah. good stuff and you get the insane <laughs> stuff. That's, that's what I'm saying, yeah. You get some cool stuff, they have total control, and then they get just... Well... <laughs> so bad I'd, I'd be willing to think that nowadays a lot of the a lot of the eoc stuff and stuff that went down was like a lack of knowledge about how it would play out but i, I do trust the old school devs enough in today's game to not add shit like that yeah. i do i do i do genuinely believe that if polls didn't exist the direction they take the game might not be perfect but it'd be miles better than what we have with polls yeah i prefer like a um, a clean like all-around game than um the craziness that is rs3 as cool as it can be like <laughs> yeah like you're gonna have high peaks but you're gonna have very low lows exactly yeah yeah <laughs> so one big thing that has like changed my view across the entire game and one of the reasons why i think that i didn't agree much with the overall thoughts on your recent vid was because mm -hmm. i've started to look a lot more about how i think the game should really shape up in terms of the maximum enjoyment for the maximum amount of players. And this idea of trying to give ideas that really help uh, center everything on progression and really uh, how to increase specifically new player retention, that one key metric across yeah. the board, which will therefore lead to more growth for Jagex, more development into the team, and ultimately higher content instead of wanting to play selfishly and ask for not saying you are like but I, you know everyone everyone votes selfishly everyone wants yeah. the thing that they enjoy and changing my views on like i want this now give it to me and this is what i should have and this is 
good to let's focus entirely, let's, let's remove all of that and focus entirely on let's try and have good ideas that increase the progression of players in the game, gets them hooked on that feeling and that dopamine and that con constant focus on improving, both bank value, uh, game ability, just overall enjoyment, everything. And I think this is a super healthy way to view the game. And it changes a lot about, again, how, how I think we should go about doing things, as well as what should be added to the game, what should be worked on, where to spend the resources, and all that stuff. It's it's my one big thing that I am super focused on right now. Um, and everything okay, that so I... so you're saying yeah, um, overall, like, accessibility uh, is, like, the most important thing, and retaining new players is the most important thing. I watched your I watched the bit on your stream that you talked about it. So I like mm -hmm. yeah. I think I got your take. Um, a, a lot of people took what I said and just like fully ran with it. They're just like, "Oh, you're just being super selfish. Um, mm -hmm. All you want is content catered to you." Um, and I get how they like pulled that away because I wasn't. I, I compared the new like boss release to Muzpa because that's like. Yeah, similar to what it is. I said we got three new Muspas. I, I don't like Duke, so I don't I don't call him a like, Duke Muspa. sucks, man. <laughs> I've only killed it like ten times. I was like, this is so boring. Um, <laughs> he's Duke. He's Duke is Dukey. Um, <laughs> the the point of the video was that there's a not so small section of the player base that um, wants to see content pushed. Um. And my point was not, oh, every single update needs to be tailored to us. I'm not saying every single boss edition needs to be difficult. I don't think these are bad additions, like the Desert Treasure, Treasure 2 bosses. I was just disappointed because it's yet again another thing that's like not pushing anything. Nothing wrong with it being added. Um, I, I think you said in your t talk on stream that like one content edition a year and maybe a raid every two years. I think that's what you said, yes, right? Yes, that, that's correct, yeah. I would be so happy with that. Like, that would be perfect. Yeah. Um, and just just throw us a bone once in a while. That's that's all I was yeah. saying. And I also mentioned in the video the idea of the scaling and rage. That's a perfect system. Like, Toa was the perfect opportunity for them to um, implement something that's, like, perfect for everybody. Uh, it can be accessible, and it can be scale up to a nice difficulty for everybody um, and be interesting and, like, something to sink our teeth into. Uh, toe at a high level is just not enjoyable. It's things defense and health scales, and that's really it. The invocations take away instead of um, adding, for the most part. Yeah, that's really, yeah, that's super important. Making sure that things actually don't just detriment from, as you go higher, things shouldn't get more boring. They should be more stimulating. Yes. I think they've learned that, especially from, like, um, hard mode they should have learned a bit from because those mechanics that were added were fairly good, but maybe not quite right. But now the DT2 bosses that we have here, the Awakened versions, having increased the mechanics, having almost a different fight to play out. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. for me, Leviathan feels entirely different. Um, I think they've done a good job on that, at least. But I, I appreciate the job, point. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you kind of like nailed it there with the idea of if we are 5% of the player base, and we're not, we're more like 1%, but let's just say for a second we're 5%. That, that I, should I, mean. I keep having people throwing random numbers at me too. They're like yeah, point yeah. zero zero zero. It's just so so pointless. Yeah, it, but yeah, let's just assume for a second we're five percent. Sure. Still a, an, an extreme minority, but there are a lot of people interested in PVM, and there are more people who are pushing to that level over time. So let's let's take five percent to mean those players who are interested in this stuff. Yeah. That means that one in twenty players likes this stuff, and I think that should mean that one in twenty updates should cater to us. That's where I think we should go with it. I and don't... Hmm. yeah, I don't know. Do you think that's fair? Like, I just I disagree equating, with that. Equating think... the updates to the player base. Here, okay. So I'm just gonna share my thought before I let yeah, no go, go in. But I'm it's thinking. like, <laughs> so I actually said this on my Tob Tuesday appearance with Prison Joe. Um, obviously, it's like a sort of like edited video, so I didn't get all my thoughts in into the actual video itself. But it's he asked like, what what group of players should we be catering to? Like, yeah. should Jagex be catering to? And I said, there's there should be, like, a top-down approach where it's, like, the most dedicated players technically should be the most catered to. And the only reason I say that is, be well, I'll just paint the other picture. Should it be the opposite way where day one players are catered to, catered to the most? Like, that would obviously not make any sense. We can all agree on that. Like, we, the game I, should not be catered toward just giving updates to the day one plebs. I, I do actually think it should be. Uh, and really? I can explain it. 
Yeah. Okay. Right. Explain. Um, I'm, I'm very curious. What I said before about how I really think it matters to. So, like, it, it's an old school problem. It's This isn't a problem for other games, but the reason why is because the majority of players are players who are used to play in the past. It's just a fact. And the, the way they advertise the game uh, has been relive the nostalgia. It's this mm -hmm. idea of you play, play before, you understand the game fundamentally or sort of intimately to a degree, and you miss it. Come back and play it. And the advertising on different sites, and by the way, Sweeney's doing an insane job with advertising, and it's really good, but the advertising itself is highly targeted, and it doesn't really focus on getting new players into the game. And I want this, um, I want the overall picture to be seen as one of, they need to focus on overall game health and improvements, not just for the next three, four, five years, but like potentially onwards, because Old School has lasted 20 years now, and I think it has potential to continue another 20. I mean, there's no indication that it's slowing down. The concurrent yeah. player base is growing, and the general game health is amazing. So they're doing something right. But what they're not uh, doing, as far as I'm aware, and I'd love to see stats on it, is getting new players who have never touched the concept of RuneScape before into the game. And so having, uh, having updates, finally drawing it back, having updates that cater to those players who just started for the first time, and really helping them both both level if not efficiently but understanding how to level and moving them through the early game as quickly as possible to get to a stage where they're interested in a specific thing be it i'm interested in more skilling i'm interested in more pvp i'm interested in more pvm getting players through that early game stage especially new players i think is is fundamental to the long-term game success and those players oh, will no, eventually for become... sure that's super valuable yeah uh, rs3 yeah. has a problem where the interface is just not parsable like you can't you log into runescape 3 and there's like forty thousand pop-ups in your face the yep. interface system is actually really good it's completely customizable you can do whatever you want with it but it's, but it's so like, overwhelming it's so overwhelming as a new player mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to get into this is a struggle they're that, having that was my exact when i when i first logged in on eoc i i, I played for a day thought i'm overwhelmed <laughs> and quit <laughs> yeah and that's really really common that's the issue yeah. you're having yeah so this is why i mean like not not every update but I think a lot of work needs to go into helping those players move into a stage where they're actually wanting to play the game. Um, one really interesting thing about both advertising and getting players to stick around, that retention stat, is that if you want someone to do something or you're interested in getting to advertise to people, one advertisement will not get people to click it. But two might give them a good chance, and three drastically increases the chances of them clicking on it. Much in the same way that if you introduce content to new players and you have this first iteration of, let's say, forestry, and ignore ignore the actual updates themselves, but like imagine a new player can 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 participate with it. If you give them forestry for the first time, they might be like, "That's kind of cool. I enjoyed the social aspect, and my woodcutting XP seemed pretty good." And then you don't give them any more updates after that point in time. They're just like, "Now what do I do? I'm kind of I don't know where to go." But if you release more content, or especially at low level, like let's say from levels 20 to 50, that they can actively participate in. Let's say Temporos was actually like level 20 accessible. Now you have something that they're going to go to and get this second dose of dopamine, that second sort of latch on moment where they actually start enjoying the game and see more for what it is and the progression. And then you do it a third time and a fourth time and you keep adding these low level updates. I actually think that makes a huge difference in exactly the same way the advertising grip does to get those players motivated to not just sit down and maybe do one bit of content, but lots of it and explore more of it because they're enjoying it. That's see, my whole thing on it, though. I, I, I agree yeah. with most of that. Um, yeah. The problem with me, or the problem that I see is that, like, well, first of all, they did a, a fantastic job with Desert Treasure 2, and Mod Ed painted it really clearly in the last Save A cast where he was just saying, like, we needed to start pushing the difficulty of these quest bosses. Like, mm -hmm. there are some, there's a big number of players that don't care about hard things in this game they just want to play runescape for chilling out gaining xp and just relaxing basically um so you know there's that concern of like oh this is too difficult but i think they nailed it where it's only a one-time completion just finish it it is a grand master level quest and you're finally introducing pretty tough mechanics to mid game people that are entering the mid game and realizing like, okay like this is actually gonna give me i think the desert treasure 2 bosses like all four of them are pushing like that window into like getting good and getting prepared for inferno and raids and things like that because they are just solo variants you're learning really 
key mechanics and that's a really good thing the the problem is catering towards day one noobs and stuff and just trying to artificially get them to a certain stage really quickly where they really haven't learned much and now they're just in this mid-game gray area where they just got zoomed past it zoom past all like the the tough challenging things in the early game or not tough challenging but just just the grind like you have to I don't know. It's like an expression of like, I'm willing to grind. I'm willing to push through this. And I feel like that kind of builds character <laughs> in a way where like uh, now you're willing to, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's tough. I, for me I to grant like, it makes you, it yeah, introduces you to a more like, that's the experience we all had playing when we were young, right? Yeah. That's like you, you grind a bit, you get results, you get the dopamine and ultimately RuneScape is a grind game. But I just don't really believe that the first 50 levels do anything more than stagnate pro that, that than like stagnate progress for players who like don't know how to train them. There aren't good skill guides. There aren't good, like maybe no, an that's example a of thing that can be helped. About. That that's definitely a thing yeah. that can be. But catering towards updates. Uh, so one of my problems is like forestry. Forestry is a bad update in my opinion. Just overall bad because yeah, the entire incentive is just oh this is going to make woodcutting faster. So it's going to just make your whole experience just faster. It, it makes it more interactive though. It's the maybe worst the interaction thing, ever. It's the it's just the worst I form of interaction, though. Well, the, maybe the that's... thing in my video too is it killed Sulia steps. So I don't know if it even necessarily does. It's like it's replaced a lot of things. So it's like it's, it's replaced arguable. some stuff. But the, it's definitely so. It's definitely more interactive. And the question is, it's do you more, like the interaction? It's more interactive, but it's like the worst form of interaction. It's just like saying Giants Foundry is a good update because there's some interactions. Like it's just such a shitty. Wait, and, and the thing, the problem is, is that most people just see it as, oh, this, it, it's almost like we're so close-minded. We're like pigeonholed into like, this is all it could have ever been. So it's either this or that. It's like one or the other. Like, why not just come out with a woodcutting update that's genuinely fun and genuinely like good and maybe doesn't just destroy what woodcutting was for 22 years? Well, what's a good example of how that could change for the better then? Well, one is not just completely revolutionizing the entire skill, where now every single thing is forestry. That so that's we keep the base one. tree mechanic. We keep the base tree mechanics, but where do we go in terms of they they could make it more enjoyable? The greatest thing that forestry did was changing tree mechanics. The events. Oh, really? The events yeah. are the biggest problem. Like, yeah, the, the tree mechanics are fantastic. If that's all forestry was, was hey, hey, when you have ten people chopping this tree, you're gonna get a little bit of a buff, and all these trees won't just despawn by having more people. That would have been just a phenomenal update. Yeah, like, that alone. <laughs> but, I'm surprised, but I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The the events are really what just feels like Toontown. Like, imagine they did that with every. This is the fear. It's like people see it as this is Toontown. It, it's Toontown yeah. because people are genuinely advocating for this to happen with mining and fishing and everything. Like, they want, so you're just mining anything and like, oh, a new event, like, click this, click this. It's just like, this is literally for babies. This is... We get Vardorvis uh, capture pop-up that gets you bonus mining XP plus 2k. <laughs> like, I'm, jackpot, I'm, worried, <laughs> I'm worried about, like, the toddler-esque <laughs> just activities of it. Like, you're not... Put, this is another thing that I think is... <laughs> is pigeonholing the player base and the just the team in general is skilling is seen as this needs to be accessible to everyone day one and it needs to be the easiest boring bullshit of all time and then pvm can do whatever they want that that can be the challenging stuff i wish skilling i wish they would start seeing how amazing sepulcher was and start going down that route where you're actually coming out with meaningful skilling updates that are pushing your skill a little bit even I think it's really tricky to do it for most skills. Obviously, agility ties into movement so well, which is why Sepulchre is incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I find it very tricky to understand how maybe a herb law could, or like just a skill like herb law, which is ultimately making potions in cool yeah. combinations, how no, that no, could that... be something more. I guess that's that's. Yeah, there there are there there are some skills that really don't need to be changed fundamentally. I think herb law, fletching, like these kind of things that are just, just traditional bank standing skills. I think that's totally fine. I think thieving mm -hmm. is the most. Thieving like, has the second most. The I think clearest, agility. Thieving, like yeah. you could do something with it. I'm surprised they picked woodcutting first to like overhaul before thieving, because like thieving just feels terrible. Yeah. Like okay, just imagine this. Imagine. I, I try to paint this picture. I'm terrible at trying to explain these things in words. But imagine something that's as flow as as much flow as four to one ohm, 
but now it's you got you know a few different rocks that you're mining and it's in this perfect flow where you're not having to do some stupid knife log bullshit but you're staying in this rhythm where you're mining these minerals and you got to keep this flow and if you lose the flow then you start losing a bunch of ticks and you're like oh crap i got to get back in the cycle get back in the cycle and now there let's say there's i don't know falling rocks so now it's not just completely brain dead <laughs> but you got some falling rocks falling on you and you got to keep up this rhythm so now it's like wow i actually got i got this fun thing going where i'm gaining xp having a good time and there's a little bit of interaction going on instead of it just being like click this object click this object like fucking winter todd like click the brazier click back on the roots it's like jesus christ this is so boring how, how does um giant's foundry not quite fill that right because it's an attempt at it but it doesn't seem that it's gone down too well with high level skillers yeah the, but it seems but it seems to give interaction so the, the, sure the problem is is the devs don't understand the beauty and rhythm and predictable resource extraction like they don't understand that they they see they're starting to see it, but they're not actually grasping it. It's just like, oh, click this object, click this object. There's no flow to it. There's no real meaning. There's no, there's no beauty in it. As cringe as that sounds, but like there, you gotta, I don't know. There's something to tick manipulation methods. The, the problem with tick manipulation methods, and I even made a, a thread on this on Twitter, is like the biggest problem is carpal tunnel inducing shit. Like where you're just having to constantly click two items over and over to keep up this rhythm. Imagine you just got rid of that. Like get rid of all the wrist breaking shit and just focus on the beauty of rhythm and flow in these skilling methods. That's, I think, the the way we have to go with skilling, in my personal opinion. I, I do like the idea. I'd, I'd be interested in seeing some like actual real big conceptual thing drawn up for a skill. It's hard to imagine, though, is the problem, I guess. I actually... I don't, I don't know how you're going to... I would love to design a skill. The thing is, like, I'd, I'd be willing to put in some time. It's just going to be tough because I'm not an artist, and I would need to, yeah. like, hire somebody to basically express what I want to see. But I would love it if Jagex came out with new player design content because I, I swear there is so much potential for skilling, and it's just not being seen by anybody. I mean, there's got to be something there because so many people do 200 mil all, and I get it. Maybe autism slash just like it's locked in a room with it, but <laughs> yeah. th there's th there's something more there, right? That people actually do enjoy. Yeah, yeah, day. yeah. Anyway, um, that's my little rant. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Um, yeah. Anyway, that I, I know neither of you are skillers, but wouldn't it be cool if there was some like really challenging skilling content that came out? Like imagine a sepulcher on steroids that's not XP based. You still get a little bit of XP, but it's it's truly just, you know, you get some un sick untradeable rewards and it's a skilling update. Like, I don't know. I think that would just be so cool to start going down that route of challenging skilling. I'm, I'm down to see it and try it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah the, the design process is very tricky for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. It's going to be like adding the chambers of skilling, you know? Yeah. yeah. You don't know until you just they deliver. Uh-huh. Let's talk about Comp Cape. Mm -hmm. What are you guys' oh, thoughts? Um, I was going for Comp Cape before I quit. Um, comp Cape, I think it doesn't require it anymore. It requires a, it required a kill of every single boss. Um, and I wasn't big into team raiding, so I wasn't ever to, able to get a team together to kill Yakamaru, I remember. Um, but there was a ton of things on there that's, like, utter cancer. Um, I think the worst was, oh, what's it called? The Lunar Farm thing. I can't even remember what it's called. Uh, you, like, unlocked mage spells there. It's it's basically like Tithe Farm. It's, like, grow things and then <laughs> cast Humidify God. on them. And then you basically you had to do that for 20 hours until you unlocked all the spells. So it'd be like... If you had to get all the unlocks from Tide Farm, that'd be Comp Cape. Not okay. quite the same. It'd be worse than that. But Just quick interruption. I'm sorry about this. This is exactly what I mean. So imagine Tide Farm. This is just going back to the little skilling thing I had. <laughs> imagine Tide yeah. Farm, but they actually designed <laughs> it meaningfully, where it's not like just moving a, you know, like a couple tiles over and spending time watering but, but imagine it was fast paced like boom 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 it's a two tick rhythm just you're going back and forth back and forth and it's meaningfully designed to just be addictive like tithe farm could be so much better than it is right now but you just whoever the hell designed that shit just had doesn't That's understand so what fun is i'm sorry <laughs> it needs to be said though that place is a shit show oh, it's it's horrible 
It's like I feel fucking like sulfur mining. Like, who the hell came I, up with that? Yeah. I feel like there's rhythm at Tithe Farm, but it's just slow. It's the worst it's, type of rhythm. It, it, it's too slow to be something that you, like, get into, a, get into like, a groove for. Exactly. It's and not meaningfully designed. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the trick is, like, it doesn't feel right for stuff to just grow rapidly or, like, be planted within a tick, you know? And maybe that's, like, a limitation on sort of the... What's, what's the word for this? Like, how, how you feel like the world is. Yeah. Sort of the... Yeah, uh, yeah. I've lost the mm -hmm. word, but... Anyway, keep going. I, I, I get um, the point there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with Comp okay. I feel like we effectively have, like, we have Zuck Helmet. We have a bunch of things that effectively are Comp Cape or have become that in addition to it. Uh, comp Cape RS3 is just completion of everything, ideally. It's like, do a bunch of mini games, um, get all your skills maxed, do all your quests, do all your diaries, get all the music tracks, that kind of thing. Um, we have a lot of, like, untradeable, like, aspirational stuff. Um, the question is, does that add anything to know that, I don't know. I did not find it fun to go for at all in RS3. I can say that. So l let me ask you the big question. Should a comp cape be introduced into old school? I think no, because this is the problem they've been running into as well. Um, they, they've been having to design stuff around comp capes existence. Um, it's a good example. Uh, oh, they had a couple of things that they couldn't like. Like, you can't ever make a boss too hard if it requires all the boss kills yep. because it's not fair. Like, if Awaken Leviathan is required for comp cape, is that fair, like, to all the people who have comp cape? So you, now you have to, like, cater to this, like, group of people who have this cape and are going to be mad if you take it away. You constantly have to keep that in, in mind. It's not just, like, a thing you're like, oh, here you go. You guys can go for it if you want. It's now a thing you have to, like, keep up with. Yeah. Is, is that worth it? I don't know. There's very distinct disciplines in game. PvP, PvP, PvM, and skilling, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's a couple more little ones, but role like... playing. <laughs> role playing. And and fundamentally, if you bring a comp cape in, you cannot please all three disciplines. No. And while there's always gonna be some crossover, it's like, is is it really you know, you, you can't please everyone. Do you please the majority? Do you please like the PvMers since it's perhaps the largest portion? Um, how do you how the hell do you even do that? It's it's doesn't even make sense really. I think one good idea is, and this is a, this is again dependent on them not making some boss like ridiculous. Like you need awaken the Leviathan for comp cape, okay, and it's in it's in CA, like okay. Yeah. But what if they had a comp cape that is just like all the base things: quest cape, music cape, achievement diaries, core and favor, maxed, and maybe GM CAs, maybe. And then from there, you have flavors of cape. So you have one that is orientated to skilling, one orientated to PVM and PVP, and then you can have. You can have those distinct capes and you can trim them as you do more things within this. Like maybe the CA reward tiers allow you to adjust your cape based on that. Maybe as your progress to 4.6 increases, you adjust your skilling cape based on that. Maybe your kills or your progress in different PvP areas adjust your cape like that. And so having having the base cape be like the end all as far as what it does, and then giving players the choice to choose how they want to change that cape, but not making some overall cape that combines all three. You have to choose a disciplined look for your cape. That sounds like a decently fair way to do it that caters to everyone. Thoughts? The thing, the thing you have to keep in mind, to, um, things like pets that are like cosmetic, they don't really matter. They do affect things. Even if you, you're like, oh, it's just a cosmetic thing. Um, the, the implications of adding a pet to something does affect things. I've seen people suggest things like, let's add a Barrow's pet. And it's like, God. if you add a Barrow's <laughs> pet, that instantly ruins that moneymaker for any low level. Yeah. It, it's now grinded by high levels. That's what Barrow's becomes if you add a Barrow's pet. I, I saw someone at a ridiculous extreme too on Reddit suggest a Konar chest pet. So now you encourage all the high levels to kill worms and drop the price of harpoons. Uh, anything that you give something that's like cosmetic and something you show off now high levels are doing it so that's the thing you have to keep in mind it's true it's a really good point yeah yeah so i'm against comp cape personally i've been against it i think the reason the simple reason is that it discourages updates like it, it literally makes people vote no to things simply because it means yes. they have to now do this to keep their cape so that is just a detriment. Now, I have always been a huge fan of the collection log book where 
that is that is basically like the comp cave. It's like a, a different version. Obviously, there's Zuck Helmet, which is arguably already kind of like a comp thing for PVM. There would just be a collection log book where it upgrades every 100, uh, a new like look to it. And the the reason this is so good is because first of all, comp cape is so hard to say what the limits are. Like, wh what do you actually need to do to get it? With the collection log book, you know exactly what you can do and every 100, you're gonna upgrade your book. And so it literally is encouraging updates because now it's like, oh, I really wanna get to that next 100 slot and this new update's being pulled. Like, I actually want this to come out because it'll make me getting to that next milestone actually a little bit easier technically. I think um, that's technically the way. To, it's yeah, it's definitely know. better than Comp Cape because it's like you can go at it at your own pace and there's no like clear end goal. Yeah. But like I said, it's still that problem. If you start giving cosmetic for Clog, then you're encouraging people to go do it. And if if you added a cosmetic for the collection log, so many more people would be doing it. So many more. I feel like you, so many people it, already are already doing it though. That's the. That's I, it would it would quintuple maybe more. The amount mm. of people doing it. Okay. So the question is, is that okay that you now have a bunch of people going and getting mossy keys and taking down the, the price of Briafita staff? Is it okay that they're yes. going out in droves <laughs> and um, <laughs> clogging everything? I don't know. Yeah. It's a thing to keep in mind. No, you're it's you're good, right. But it's the, a good point. But the thing with clog is it's everything in the game. Yeah, like, it's playing the game. It's just playing the it's, game. It, it's, it's like saying, is it bad for people to play the game? It's like, no, but... Yeah, the, exactly. the point That's is valid, right? It's it's more so a thing where like specific things within the clog that are easier to farm for slots are going to be more commonly farmed. So the things that are in that position yes. are going to get destroyed, and the things that are extremely difficult are going to be left to last. It still encompasses like everything, so people are still going to do more of everything. But those things in particular, as you said, are going to get killed. Yeah. Um, maybe. That's no, I a mean bad thing, that but. that is just the problem with collection log in general. Like just the simple fact that you get number go up by doing something you wouldn't normally have done anyway. That's the main um, problem. I, I'm so big on that as far as like a detriment to it in the sense that there are so many things that are fun to do in game, but there are so many things that we individually hate. And yet clog, bec clog because it encompasses everything, you yeah. will find yourself, if you care about clog, doing things you hate. And Ex that to exactly. me is bad. It is yes. bad. I mean, that's that's what happened with Max Cape. When Max Cape came out, People now that hated skilling need to go skill. And that's what's literally... People hate skilling. Because now you're like basically it. forced to do it. Because you have this huge incentive to do it. And now they're mm -hmm. incorporating skilling into PVM. Where it's like, oh, you're trolling if you don't have 99 mining at TOA. Yeah. It's like, that, that's the biggest the fuck? <laughs> that's the biggest difference between Com Cape and Clog is the fact that this the Cape is incentive. Whereas finishing the Clog is like up to you and you don't get anything for it. You yeah. get the flex to what you've done, but it's your own choice. For a comp cape, people say you have a choice for it, you don't. If it, the, the if it ultimate, exists, you'll go for it. The ultimate extreme, and I think they removed this step, ult, for trimmed comp cape, I think it was, you need every single reward from Castle Wars. Um, Jesus Christ. I think Christ. you need to own them all at the same time. You can't even sell it back. Uh, so it, it was like, a, God. I think, literally 4,000 hours of AFM to get tickets. That's, that's absurd. Like, that's absurd. That was one of the things for trimmed comp. Now, trimmed comp cape is different. It just gives you a little trail. It wasn't required for the full cape, but still, it's like... You're forced to do a thing that you hate. Nobody enjoyed that. <laughs> Holy shit! You see, that's a pro. Yeah, that's. I'm not. I'm not a fan of comp cape. Yeah, yeah. I'm already not it, a fan it, of. I'm not a fan of things being given perks. I think that's the main thing. Like, if we could go back in time, I honestly wish the max cape had never had perks. It, it's okay to have a max cape, but I think the perks only. is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine I the agree. CM cape had perks like the like you know like the yes yes please i have one yeah <laughs> but now yeah. you're gonna get people yeah. now cms are gonna get made easier and easier and easier because everyone needs it because it's this new best in slot cape yeah it's it's a tricky slippery slope as well encouraging people to do things is a thing you got to keep in mind for yeah. sure totally one thing if you choose another thing if there's incentive yeah yeah Okay, quickly going back to the awakened bosses. Will a hardcore ever get Blood Torva? Yes. E eventually. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. They're um as Uncheated. Today, this is the Yes. So okay. it is four days since release of Awakened Bosses. Uh there are four Iron Men who have Blood Torva as of today, and probably maybe more at this point. Maybe like five or six. Yeah. Each of them took approximately 
10 to 20 orbs total. And it's the start of seeing the limited accounts get this stuff. Um, I'm imagining the likes of Lake and Puggin to be like at that caliber where they could do it. Just to name two, there's plenty of people. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously you have to own a hardcore, which is a bit of a block for a lot of people who don't have one. But in terms of those who could do it, yes, now the methods are out. Now now the information's out. It can happen. It's extremely hard, but yeah. yeah. Because it's, Leviathan it's... is 100% consistent, methods will come out to yeah. do it consistently. And it can be practiced on a different account. So that's yeah. true. For sure. Yeah, that's going to be if tough. If it was a case uh, where it just... wasn't consistent, then... Changes the, things, but the nerves, yeah. man, just the fucking nerves walking in. At the, <laughs> and you're at the very yeah. end of Leviathan and you're just like shaking, like, oh my god, you'd have to do hundreds of hours. I mean, the, the guys who've done Mutz and Praiseworth, the guys who've done the Hydro task on Hardcore, mm -hmm. they practiced for so long on me, right. yeah. so long, but but it's consistent, you can practice it, yeah. and so if you can practice it, it's doable. Yeah, it's true. I would love to see Mutz. If if Mutz gets blood Torva, he he will yeah. definitely claim the throne of the greatest hardcore of all time. I, I think it might actually top solo top. Sorry, cold. Oh, it, it's yeah. very oh, yeah. it's very close, but I think it's it's it, it tops better. it. Yeah. yeah, it would top it. Yeah, and especially because Mutz already has a Zuck helmet, which, which is just insane. I mean, one of two. Yeah, what the fuck? That's insane. Yeah. The Zuckerm is not as insane as it sounds. I, I still think like the Hydra task is terrifying. Um, yeah. And there are like maybe four or five tasks that are terrifying. But the rest of them aren't that bad. The biggest struggle is just getting the gear. Like, That's I know, it. That, I know Praise that, yeah. struggled with Nightmare because he didn't have the gear to kill it yeah. fast enough. Exactly. So. No, uh, I think build, build the account, get the gear, and then begin it's that a huge it. amount of gear you need it, to get. It's everything. all of those so three things. It's just yeah. yeah, like you said, it's like building an account to that point in the first place, and then not yeah. dying, getting all this gear, and then not dying doing any of the tasks. The only thing that's well, the the thing that will never be done, and I I will, I mean, I will literally put money on the line on this one is no group hardcore will ever get a suck helmet. There's just no way. Wait, why is that? Because if you die oh, at six jads, if you die in Inferno, if you die in Chambers, oh, yeah, yeah. if you die in anything, yeah. you lose your status. Um, I think with the right players, it can be done, but it, it's not likely the right I mean, group is going to come along. It's to feasible on paper. It's possible on paper, of course, but yeah, it's not going to be done. Reality, you're not finding the group to do it. Yeah. 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 But hell, I mean, someone try, please. I'd love to see it. That'd be so <laughs> insane. You know? hands is, um, my hands don't work is trying to do Blood Torver. I'd love to see that. He is. <sighs> yeah. He rec I, I said it's like it's possible you can do it. He's like, okay, we're well, gonna you know, try it. Yeah, he asked me too. I'm like, yeah, send it, man. I want to see people. it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you know, watch it, bro. I, he'll get it. I reckon he'll. It might take a year. Might take two. He'll get yeah, it. Yeah, might. I'm confident. Okay, one of the things you uh, put down, Addy, was should Jagex give old items more use on purpose? And the biggest thing I see is inquis base basically nightmare items, inquisitors and harm orb. Nightmare items and maybe scythe mm -hmm. on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Big enough topic, a lot of people discussing recently. Um, and again, a lot of people sort of maybe somewhat disappointed that Scyther wasn't extremely good at DT2 places. Mm -hmm. So I think that, yes, they should try and keep best in slot of raid items alive. But at the end of the day, Scythe should probably have a bit more use. Um, that being said, I think that there's going to be a bit of a shift, especially for Scythe, where... Players who grew up at TOA as their first raid, TOA babies, if that's what you'd like to call them. <laughs> um, those TOA babies are going to graduate to PVM school, and they're going to get bored of TOA and go to Chambers. And when they're done with Chambers, they might consider Infernal, and maybe at some point they're going to go to top. And it's one of those great things that comes from having that accessibility where people are getting to the stage where they're good enough to try new things and want a bit of a challenge and eventually will start top. So Scythe is going to go up in price because at some point those people are going to want to go to top and try it out and give it a whirl, and they're going to want Scythe to do it. So I'm not as worried about Scythe compared to the other two items. Um, and not to mention there's like 15k Scythes in game compared to like 30k Tebos and 35k Shadows. So like when those players get there, there's a lot of Scythes to be got to bring it to a place where it's going to be like super low forever. It, it's going to rise in price is what I predict, basically. Hmm. But in Quiz and Harm... Um, I mean, where is Inquis used? CM, Knight, uh, Fasani, and 
maybe sub if no Tebow. Yeah, I think Serb. It's and, it's, and then, it's CM armor. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. And then Han is like PvP and Ice Demon. Ice Demon stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's two places for it. Um, and it was like, you know, up until Shadow, Han was technically best in slot for a lot of PvM stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Like, maybe, maybe there has to be more to do with designing these items and having to fill a good niche that isn't going to get swamped over in the next like six months since after release. Maybe they need to consider an actual buff. Maybe, maybe it, I don't know. I don't know if it really, really matters. But I don't think they should let stuff die until it's been in the game for like at least a year. There has to be some like really nice niches for it. I, I think this this yeah. revolves around like better item design and better planning, though. That, that's that's so really than, what it is. It's yeah. just planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Inquisitors should be buffed. Yeah, Ink is Ink is Addy armor. Like literally for defense bonuses, and it's it adds like usually three percent accuracy to hammer. It's like so, much. and that's what it is. It's it's hammer buff armor. That's yeah. it. That's all it's for. That's what it's for in CMs. It just lets you land hammers. It needs uh, to be a hundred percent hammer spec. Like if you're specking um, with a dragon war hammer with full inquisitors, I think you should guarantee you should guarantee get the damage or sorry defense reduction. I was I was saying that too, but. Like, if you think about it, the issue with that is you now can um, bring Hammer and three-way ink, and you can do it at any boss, even if it's, like, a ranged or mage-based boss. You can just bring Hammer, three-way ink, and you can land it every time you don't need a potion. I think if they were going to do something like that, you make it, like, a, a point on your crush bonus, um, where if you're wearing ink as well, then it's guaranteed. It's getting a little bit complicated, though, now. It's getting a little into the territory of, like, Fang working only in Toa, which I don't like. Yeah. Um... One um, good solution for Inquisitor, I think, is to is to base the accuracy of the hammer based on your uh, crush bonus, so that if you reach a certain threshold, now your hammers land, yeah, forcing players to do saying. correct gear switches, forcing players to, yeah, okay, yeah, I like, like that, re really full sending that, but also not just that, but for new content, um, you can you can have some really interesting mechanics based around overall accuracy or accuracy times damage, intent P two warden formula and stuff. <laughs> also, like, I'll be honest, um, I still don't think it's a problem, even if you were to cheese a three-way or a four-way switch. It it would change the meta at a bunch of bosses, is the concern yeah. for balancing. And it's also a thing, like we were talking about earlier with Shadow, Tebow, Fang dichotomy. Now yeah. this is a thing you have to keep in mind as well. You can now land a hammer at every single boss with a four-way switch. So now you have to keep that in mind. Okay. So if they want to avoid that, you That's, just add a crush yeah. threshold. What if you do crush threshold based on NPC defense as well? You take the two together. You can do that. Yep. It's starting Maybe to be a little complicated though. So yeah, it is. That, that's a good point. So yeah, what if it was just full inquisitors gives 100% more accuracy when specking with a dragon war hammer? Something that's very significant where it's like, okay, it's, this it's, is it's better. actually going to, work. to just be a lot no. better. <laughs> Not, not that they're ever going to do it, but I wish that Warhammer, Warhammer reduced defense based on your crush accuracy versus their defense, oh, which is imagine. a mouthful. That's a mouthful, but that's also a really sick way to go about doing it. Yeah, if it, it did more drain with more crush bonus, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Also, that's just, that's just an idea for new weaponry, if anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, going back to that Fang thing, where like the Fang is still really good in TOA, but just nowhere else. That is just another thing where if. Fang had just been originally charged with like two wrath runes per hit or some sort of charge mechanic where it's literally on par with a scythe where it's like both of these weapons cost both of them have a cost to use and there is a niche for each then that would have it just literally would not have been a problem like it could have still been a very powerful weapon with a constant cost and they they didn't need to nerf it outside of the outside of the raid either in my opinion i think that would have been really cool personally I'm, I'm, de I'm definitely down to have more things have charges i'm still not like i'm not sure i'm fully convinced that it sure that's really solved. solved the big problems yeah. yeah it's not it's like the band-aid not the yeah. you got a broken bone sticking out here i i don't i don't even think it's a band-aid i think that is the way to solve um weapons really? i think charged weapons I think if if anything should be charged, it should be weapons. Don't let gear be degradable. Don't let gear be charged. Just let it be weapons only. Make everything very streamlined where everything can hold 100,000 charges. 
get in my personal opinion right. get rid of the vials of blood from the scythe and make it so scythe is charged with a hundred thousand charges blood runes only it solves it for iron men it doesn't solve it for mains though like yeah what, no, what no doesn't it solve that, well no mentioned before it was like the economy shifts Blood runes yeah. went from 250, or like not 250, but like 400 even to, two, well, to that, 200. That's an and over, that's, and over time, they're going to change a lot. That's Jagex just dumping blood runes into every new piece of content because the entire community was complaining about the scythe price. Like that, that's literally the problem is like everybody wanted to use a scythe for everything. And so we just kept crying to Jagex for them to come out with blood runes for every single piece of content. Now every single piece of content drops hundreds or thousands of blood runes on some drops, and it's just even, ridiculous. Even an item like Blood Vials has gone up like five times, and I don't know how much it is. A lot of a lot in price. They're very expensive these days, and mm. it's not because of something they did. It's because less people are doing TOB, and there's more demand for things they're used in. It's it's just a constant give and take it's just like the economy does what the economy does yeah i, I wouldn't even I be I, okay yeah go for it I, I just think it's very difficult to control ultimately yeah it, it is would have to be extremely well tailed and across lots of new items coming in it's gonna be almost impossible i'd say i don't even think it's difficult to control i mean jagex has full control on how many pieces of content blood runes are dropping from if they wanted to just increase the price arbitrarily they just stop they just nerf some. Well, first of all, they've already done it to so many bosses where now it's kind of going to be hard. But if their entire desire was to kind of control this price, just make it so certain bosses aren't just shitting out runes all the time. I, I'd be down to see it for future items. It definitely depends on the item they choose to charge it with, though. You know what would be cool is if actually, what if it was charged with coins? Just straight up GP. <laughs> you just charge. Just GP. You just charge. Os, great, yeah. You charge us Mumpton's Fang. It can hold up to a hundred mil in it, and every attack is one K GP. Every every hit. That'd be yeah, cool. And it, and it never got nerfed, so it's a super powerful weapon, one K per hit. There you go. As long as you theme, as long as you theme the item like a fucking money item yeah, that just exactly. holds and yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you theme it, like it's a cool idea for sure. Yeah. Or you can have it be a thing that a vendor sells uh, that's just bought from them with gold. Yes, if you that that's a way that to way. That works yeah. Too. That's that's the lore behind it. There you go. Interesting. Okay. Um. Yeah. So anyway, I wish Inquisitors get buffed. All those orbs are just weird. They're kind of like just. I, Eldritch is good now, but the other two are just for PvP. Volatile is funny. Too. I see people using Volatile at Whisper. It's like, you know that's like 20% better than a regular Shadow Cast, right? It's like, yeah. probably not worth bringing, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> is it actually better than a Shadow Cast? Because it has shit accuracy. I think accuracy. a tiny bit, yeah. just because okay. it's accurate. Oh, yeah. it is accurate. It, it, yeah. it has boosted accuracy. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Okay. I don't bring it personally either. I don't bring Eldritch or it. I just, I just take like Restores and Anglers and Chomp, and it's like, okay. Mm. <laughs> it's a shame but it's nice actually not having a boss you have to spec at i, quite I like bring it. i bring scepter and a small zcb switch that's been working for me i i've missed like 15 zcbs in a row with a five way and a pot so i dropped i it. had i had a good chunk of them but <laughs> just what unlucky what are you guys' unlucky. thoughts on ruinous powers being scrapped you want to go uh, uh yeah uh <laughs> it was disappointing Pointing to see them um, drop it so I think it for the it was the right call because they didn't have they had a strict deadline with Desert Treasure 2 it was getting way too close with the second beta and they had way too much to change with it for them to get it ready in time it's still disappointing that they like dropped it really quickly I feel like I think there was it a lot was of the right... a lot of potential for sure I think I agree with the potential but I think it was also the right choice to drop it yeah. I would love to see them introduced from Raids 4 or a similar like high-level place. Um, but definitely the, the balance of them, the fact that it wasn't like pleasing enough people and all that. Um, and the fact that we did actually have rewards lined up. It wasn't as if there was like DT2 is not rewardless now. It just has a bit less. And ultimately not introducing something that it just power crept items like across the board for essentially no reason is good, I think. Yeah. So. Okay, I agree with Mod Ed on this, where I think the God alignment prayers would actually be better than an entirely new prayer book. I, I, don't know if you I guys... think that's an interesting idea. Yeah, I, I've seen this. Yeah, you I, guys I like saw it. the post, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I like it, but what it ultimately comes down to is assigning actual mechanics to the prayers. How do they fundamentally work? Yeah, because the DT, DT two prayers on their own, 
Um, you can pick any given one out, and it's not really that bad. But when you when you actually like, you can say like, "Give me God prayers." But what exactly do they do? And when I read through the Reddit post, I, I, I don't have it at hand, but if, if I read through the Reddit post and go, go through each one, I can either say overpowered, broken, won't work, and I can very clearly go through that. And last time I did it, it was like, you really don't have much to work with here. Yeah. It's just very tricky to add them through, uh, to add them in. Hmm. It's a great idea, but yeah. but so is the base spellbook. And it's just about finding the right things that don't break too much of the game. But if you're going to do to something like, uh, let's say it's an alignment that gives you four prayers at the bottom, right? If you're mm -hmm. going to add something like that, you make it have like one overhead that's a buff of some kind and then three like passive prayers, whatever you want. Maybe like one is an offensive and two are like passives that you can have on. That's the kind of thing you go for. Overheads are really that that was the whole like Gambit was the coolest like idea with that whole prayer book with the idea of flicking an overhead in between your protection prayers. That's like the easiest way to add skill in the game that they could just like do. Mm -hmm. And having some different ones would be really cool. Not soul split though. Please don't add soul split. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think... I'd like to see I'd like to see the scale of using prayers in between your protection prayers. That was really fun to use. Yeah. I love I'm... I love the idea of small one. I love the idea of I was thinking hard mode Leviathan would throw like a purple orb at you. And you have to have no prayer on instead of a prayer on, Ooh, which is the same oh, thing, shit. but a, a, but a reverse system, which is also really cool. Yeah, that's cool too. And that, that doesn't require cool. you doesn't require you to add a new prayer, just Turn adjustment to boss mechanic, which is that's a nice way of doing it. Should do. yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Or they should have added smite and redemption ones as well. So now you have <laughs> yeah. six. Holy oh, shit! <laughs> Turn them do off. Do the whole damn spell book. No, actually, no, no. You got seven because of redemption too. Just make yeah. sure you don't accidentally redemption. Um, uh, okay, so one of my ideas, so this is kind of in regards to Gambit. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm, I came out with a ramble a few months ago just talking about, like, little prayers I would want. One of them is Judgment, just one that's purely accuracy-based. It would what be something... What exactly does it do? It would just be, like, something extreme, like 50% or even higher accuracy, potentially on all styles. So right. this is under the assumption that Augury gets a change as well. Currently, I just wish Augury had some sort of just like nerf a cult a little bit and add like 2% damage to Augury. Like just yeah. something where yeah, it's that. not just mm -hmm. an accuracy prayer. Um, so this is under that assumption. So judgment would be a prayer that's similar to piety. You can't obviously have two of them on at once. So you would just choose judgment. That would be for like Warhammers and stuff. So imagine Inquisitors had that 100% buff on top of judgment. Now you're just literally hammering everything. Um, and then the other one was this prayer called, it would either be called like bulwark or something like that, where it's just this prayer where you are just a tank and that would be something where you flick. So like you're praying piety and then you turn on like the bulwark prayer, which is right underneath it. And that would be like 50% or even higher defense. Um, something where like you're, you can flick this and you're getting actually a significant more amount of defense. So it's just something where like you don't need to ever do it. But if you really just want to put in a little bit more effort on some bosses, you can. Um, you know, something like that. And then I think those are the main two. And then I, I do think that, you know, some God alignment stuff would be kind of cool as long as it doesn't get too convoluted. They'd have defense, to specify. Yeah. yeah. The defense one is with with the prayers that you're flicking to, they have to feel like they're doing something, but they also have to not feel necessary. So having it do things like increase your defense or increase your accuracy are good. It's when you start adding things like damage that it feels like yeah. necessary to use everywhere. Yeah. So exactly. that's when people don't like it. So like that's one of the vows. One of the vows is like flat two percent damage, and it's like players might yeah. use this. No, they're going to use it all the time, and now they're <laughs> they will use it always because it. it's damage. Yeah. 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 Can't have that. Well, I mean. If, if they were, okay, so imagine this. Imagine instead of God alignment, there is just, so imagine right below piety, rigor, and augury, there's three new prayers. One of them's judgment, one of them's the bulwark prayer, and then one of them can be like swapped out, and it would be like uh, maybe four different ones. One of them is like a passive healing effect where, you know, just very minimal, like 1% something healing, one of or maybe even a little bit more. You got to. We would have to talk about it. Where it's like maybe there is one that's an extra percentage of damage. One of them is two percent extra healing. One of them's potentially I don't know. Fucking do something else. I, little teeny things where you actually would have a decision to be made. Like, do you want to stay here longer and have a little bit of healing? Fundamentally, within PVM, it comes down to DPS, and almost all content revolves around how much you can do. There's not many places you tank. There's not many places you need HP regen. 
Yep. Um, the the problem with it's tricky sustain and defense is if you just kill the boss faster, it stops hitting you. Exactly. So is that offense is defense. defense you gain worth the lost time? Probably not. Almost ever, and it isn't ever worth it. You always want to kill the boss faster, a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. So. No, and that that would that's the problem with an entirely new prayer book in the first place is that simple construct of everything's black and white. It's like, is it doing more damage or is it not? Right. Yep. There are still speaking. some. There are still useful effects like the, the defense. Uh, defense reduced over time per hit prayer. One of the battles cool. was great. Well, they're, mm -hmm. they're cool. Um, I just think prayers have to avoid doing more damage directly. That's okay. the main thing. Prayers themselves, uh, the offensive ones, that's their job. As soon as Getting it does other prayers that do that, damage, not work. Yeah, as soon as it adds damage, it's necessary. So, yeah. is it fun to use that thing that requires that is required? That's the that's the issue. It has to be fun. Okay, it's then not... I would I would even say do do something like this. Then just something very simple where, uh, let's say one of them will have a chance of giving you a prayer point back, <laughs> or one of them has a chance of giving you an HP back, or one of them you know, has a chance of giving you a few run energy back. Just something, it's so tough because you're right. Where it just, all of these seem yeah. completely pointless if it's not damage-based. This but, is yeah. why it was good they shelved it because it's exactly. so hard to make it good. It's like, so true. They, did, they, needed, they needed a long time to make it good. Yeah, so. that's tough. It's a toughie. Interesting. Okay. Still think, still think we're going to get it from raids four or, or like at some It'll point come. in the future. Mm-hmm. Just refined and with these ideas in mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Addy, do you have any topics? Um, ring drop mechanic from DT2. Do we oh, yeah. like it? Oh, is yeah. It good? Is it bad? What does it actually mean for people? This is so split. This is completely split between players. Some people are just like, it's good. I like the consistency. Prevents people going too lucky or too dry. Other people are like... It's uh, it's a fundamental part of how drops work in the game. This is this is a bos this is a bir a abysmal a, like a, a barrent, just a Frankenstein of ring, you know. So I'll just share my thoughts real quick. Mm -hmm. I personally don't like it, but I actually like that Jagex is experimenting with things. I I can appreciate them going outside the box and just testing things and seeing if we like it without it having a huge detriment. That's fair. Yeah. What are your guys? Is I think um. Okay, so on paper, if a ring is 1 in 600, I, we have the rough rates now. They've been crowdsourced. If, it's, if a ring is 1 in 600 um, versus getting three 1 out of 200 rolls, what it's, what it's done, and the fact people know that that's how it works, is you now, it's now ball and chain. You now feel like you have to stay at a boss until you get the ring because you don't know if you've gotten a ring. So they have these, these two systems working. They have an untradeable axe that you need to go to all four bosses to complete. And they have rings that are ball and chain, require you, they're, they're, you can't get spooned them and you can't go dry on them. So it's like, you'll get it roughly around rate most of the time. So it feels like, oh, I've got to stay at this boss until I get the ring drop, I'm close. So what it's done is now you get an ax piece and you're like, well, I don't have the ring yet. I guess I just stay here until I get the ring. So people are like, feel stuck. At, it's the fact it's four new bosses. If this was like one boss, I don't think it'd be that be a big deal but the fact it's four bosses that encourage you to go around to all four of them to finish an axe while also encouraging you to stay at them until you complete a ring is kind of like at odds with each other and it's frustrating mm. yeah strongly agree the other if the you, other issue yeah. oh sorry go ahead no 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 just keep keep going okay the no other question. issue um economically is majority of players are going to do a boss maybe somewhere between I don't know, 50 to 200 times. A, a big chunk of the KC is people who aren't doing a lot of KC. But if they are going to a boss and doing... If they go and do like 50 Vardorvis, just for fun, they're not going to get a ring. Ever. If if that same chunk of people with the different drop system go do... Like, spread out across the entire KC, a, a normal amount of people are going to get spooned. It, it's not going to be like... Uh, leaning towards the people who have a, a crap ton of KC. It's It's going to everybody, like, equally. So these rings are like really, really expensive. It's interesting, like economically, the issue with like if it forcing you to stay at a boss for a long time. It's kind of weird. That's true. I don't know if that's bad yeah. necessarily either, but it's yeah. it's weird. But you can I, appreciate I, at least that they're trying something now. Sure. Yeah. 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 So 
I strongly agree with the sentiment of like axe plus ring together doesn't quite make sense. Um, yeah. And I, I like the idea that they are trying something new. For me, this ring is like f fundamentally all RuneScape drops of that nature. Like imagine you're going for an Ellie and you get it like one KC. You're happy and it's like insane and it's like the highlight of your, your old school career and whatever. Mm -hmm. This is gambling, <laughs> fundamentally. And yeah. I don't know if it's the healthiest thing the game has ever really given to people. Um, I know it's not like IRL gambling, but it feels very much an unfair system fundamentally. Where if you go lucky and you're one of those people to get like three Tebos and 100 KC, you're set. And if you're that one person who gets into chambers and doesn't see one for 5,000 KC, you are probably not going to enjoy your time anywhere near as much as the other guy. And here's, here's the thing, yeah, though. Yeah. I, I thought about it. You just said Tebow. Okay, let's think about sure. if Tebow had this, this same drop system. So yeah. you're going to get a Tebow within rate, maybe within 400 KC of rate, almost sure. So it's like eight to 1,200 raids you're going to do. So now when you go do chambers, it's not, you never have the potential of getting a Tebow. I mean, you technically do, but you're never That's like, true. oh, I could get a Tebow from this raid. It's, right. I'm going to put in 50 raids a day, work my way up to Tebow. Yeah, correct. So it kind of, I don't know, I think it takes, sucks some joy out of getting drops. It does. I, I think that's a mindset problem, because I've seen rings that are dropping below 100 KC, 150 KC, all over the place. And there are people who are over 1,000 when we know the raids now, and they're going dry. And I think people are overestimating how big a deal it is to have, like, three separate drops. And maybe it could be said that the argument for toning them so it's one in... Uh, like six individual drops or two individual drops or lower or higher rates could be made better. But I, I think it is honestly just players are doing it to themselves at the end of the day. I think um, gr mod... granted they have a reason to, but it, it's, it is dramatically, it's like on mathematically own. less likely that you get speared. Like yeah, yeah, it is. Many magnitudes. So mm -hmm. I think uh, mod but, arcane... but the closer you get, the more likely still. Once yeah. you go past rate, you're much less likely to go dry. It's just. Yeah, it just pinches the extremes. That's but what yeah. it does. To, exactly. to, to, to me, this is to me this is a fairness mechanic. At the, at the end of the day, it's a fairness mechanic. Um, it's very I, it's very unfun to watch people get lucky when you don't get lucky, and that goes a long way into making players enjoy the game more. I argue it's unfun to not be able to get lucky whatsoever and feel like it's a grind. Yeah, that, like that's just a gambling. Grind. That's a gambling problem, though, isn't it's, it? It's not gambling, though. Is it not? No. How is it not? What is the definition of gambling again? There's it's something where like you're you're putting. I don't, I'm not going to go into well, this you're, whole gambling you're, argument. You're, you're, but... you're staking. You're staking your time is the difference here compared this, to your This is money. a. Yeah, it's that... entirely a psychology thing because on paper yeah. it's technically the same. So the yeah. question is, does it feel better? That's that's yes. the issue. And, and it feels and, and, better and, and, to and some it, people and worse to some. So the question is, about, overall, is it better? Overall, is it better? And but but also fairness still comes into play here. Because if it, if it, if it if in the original system it's a one in one thousand and you get lucky and then you could also and the other person on the other side of the globe gets unlucky, maybe that enjoyment balances out. Some person gets really happy and some person doesn't enjoy it so much. It probably means that person gets hooked more if you get lucky compared to the other person who's like ah shit, been playing this game forever. I'll keep going. I will I will say I think um because Venator Bow is the same thing where it's shards that turn into a thing. Like, yeah. It, these are just untradeable shards that you can't see that are invisible for rings. It. It's effectively like Sire. It's like making a bludgeon, except you can't see the bludgeon pieces. You just get a bludgeon. Yep. I I think if you... I don't have a problem with Venator Bow. Like, that's not... The fact you can trade the shards when you get it, and it's just like, oh, I got a nice little rare, and it's, they're not that rare. It's just like you get a thing every once in a while. I think that's a better way of doing it than untradeable, invisible roll. I don't know. It just feels a lot worse. Um, I, I guess, yeah. I like what <laughs> Mod Arcane said in the in the uh in the last q a where he was saying like we could keep what we have but we could also have an additional drop where you can just get the drop one kc but it's like five times as rare oh that'd be cool you have both my, yeah. yeah well my initial thought on how this thing worked was that it was based on ingots and so whenever you received an ingot your chance of receiving the ring from that boss would dramatically increase so that at the start of killing a boss it's one in 5k you receive an ingot, it becomes 1 in 1k. You receive two ingots, it becomes 1 in 256. And therefore, you always have the chance, but the more ingots you receive, the more you build towards your ring. Is that what was The intended? more likely you are. No, 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 I'm just saying that's what I think it should have been oh, like. yeah. To I allow for that I potential. I don't get the point of the ingots whatsoever. They're so much more common, and it's it's one per ring, right? Uh, to make three. it? 
three. That's three. Okay. Yeah. So it's a bit. It's, it's still okay. way more common, I think, than the ring rates. It's just really weird. It's I like think it's there's the, always going to be idea, more ingots than rings. The idea is to bounce it out between the bosses. So if one boss drops it, if one boss gives you more ingots, the other one will give you less ingots. So overall, by the time you finish your okay. finish your four rings, it's. I think that's how it works. Interesting. If it doesn't, then it's a bit silly, right? But. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, going. I think um, they easily could have had just the ring drop and combine it with the broken down. DK rings. And I think it feels like it overcomplicates things, but maybe they just wanted some more like rare things on there. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> That's literally it. <laughs> they needed to make the collection log not look as bad. It's very arbitrary. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a fun idea to just receive more things as well. I, I very That's much true. like the idea of if if you go a boss and you don't see anything for a thousand KC, it's a bit shit. But if you do like yeah, fifty and get a little thing, it's good. So totally. Yeah, this ring is even device divisive here, more most more so than I thought it'd be. Um, <laughs> So on yeah. on the topic of drop rates and stuff, what do you guys think of just the normal drop tables of these bosses? And also the 50% boost for doing a perfect kill. The perfect loot doesn't apply to uniques, so I yeah, think yeah. it's okay. It's yeah, really it's nice incent it's nice incentive to play better and it doesn't really impact your like mega orange uh, mega like not mega if but it like affected, your, your, yeah, if it affected unique the uniques stuff. you would just telly out. Like that would be <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That would but, not be okay. Yeah, no. that would. So, they did it in a good cool. way, I think. Yeah. yeah. Cool to start with. Um, the rates actually seemed quite high to me. I thought they were going to be lower. Including the rings, I thought they were going to be a bit lower. But yeah, they're very, very rare. I'm not, I'm not too fussed. It's just very strange to me that like mo most likely BIS melee rings, BIS, BIS all rings now, are going to be like 150 mil, 200 mil for a long, long time. And that's just a bit strange, but I don't think it's bad. Um, yeah. yeah, not necessarily. Okay. I definitely think the overall price of like BIS gear should be increasing. I just maybe it's a bit dramatic, it's, but it's weird. It's also because light bearer exists just because light bearer is way better than majority of them, like most of the yeah. time. So it's just yeah. like it's and it's a yeah. light bearer issue more than a ring issue. It's sure. so funny because like back when light bearer was originally getting talked about, like being added, people were like this ring shit. Like nobody thought it would be like anything. Oh, I need use it. I was like, I need that thing. I will yeah. buy that immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <in the price. laughs> yeah. Everybody realizes. Oh, okay. This is kind of off topic, but what are you guys' thoughts on double ring slots eventually? Like just an additional Hell ring yeah. slot? Hell yeah. Is it time? Yes. And more so <laughs> importantly, to make it a reward space. <laughs> that would make it a reward from rate four. Dope. Rates four. Like where gear like slot imagine unlock would be interesting. Imagine gear, gear slots open the, the floor for like so much more stuff as well. It, it means that you can not just have like a light bearer choice. You ha you have to make the ring choice now. It opens it up because right now there's usually one item dominating like any given niche. Mm -hmm. The second it's two, it's like it's so much more interesting. It's true. But yeah, especially in a reward space, it works amazing. Raids four ring slots, please. I have two fucking hands and ten fingers, please. <laughs> I'm just gonna wear I'm just gonna wear two light bearers. <laughs> yeah, it, you're yeah. probably banned from wearing two of the same, but yeah, yeah. Ring of the gods, man. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. I, I I really like not just ring slots, but more slots for more things. I I'm a fan of um. Was it auras from RS three? RS three has so many. They have a scrimshaw auras? slot, auras, a pocket slot, so you can hold like a bone crusher in a slot. Yeah, they have like a lot. I like a lot of these things, although I I understand the idea of like passive damage or something. You 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 still can't go the damage route on these things because it will feel forced. Yeah, but. Um, there's definitely options for. They basically the similar. It's similar to an active prayer that does like a passive thing, a bit like you know run energy over time or a bit more prayer restore if you kill something. Mm -hmm. Those are I think are fine for slots, and they again offer more reward space, which right now old school's running out of because we have three best in slot mega rares, and now what's raids four gonna bring? Like you have to think about it. They can't just give out the new shadow of the raid. It's already done. There's only three styles. What's it gonna be? That's a super interesting topic though. Yeah in terms of what they can even offer. So, new slots, it's up there. It won't feel as good, but good door, good reward. So, as I was looking, well, here, let me just hear Gnome's thoughts. Are you cool with the double ring? Uh, I could, yeah, I could If it see was it. like that's, a new that's reward. That's a, a huge amount of power, so totally. it would have to be balanced, of course. But, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. That'd be kind of neat. Um. So as I was looking at the equipment interface, I just saw the shield. You know what's the saddest part about this game? Is that shields are literally garbage. In fact, like even, I mean, a defender itself has a lot of defense already. Not, it has like negative range defense. It's weird. But um, 
what are your guys' thoughts? And I know everything in this game is offense is the best defense, and you want to just maximize. But in situations where, like, imagine a shield legitimately had damage negation, like something significant, where, like, you're wearing a DFS. So, like, imagine you're at Vardorvis or whatever, and instead of wearing your defender, now you have like a DFS or some like big tanky shield and his attacks are severely like reduced because you are constantly taking damage from him. And now you have this chance of just like negating all his attacks by like 60% or something by wearing like a fucking shield. Like it, it just it depresses me. PVM. It, it, what? It breaks PVM? It, it, it breaks PVM in a lot of ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it would, I mean, um, obviously it wouldn't be 60% everywhere, but it would be like niche scenarios where like this boss no. is weak to shields or something like so, that. A good way to look at this is that Justy right now, mm-hmm. the defense, sorry, the damage taken while wearing Justy is reduced based on the defense that you have in that particular style you're being attacked with. Mm. And you can get some absurd things out of Justy if you just wear like max range defense, which is like 500 at this point. Yeah. And if you wear 500 range defense with Justy and you take a hit that's like a 10, it's now like a, I don't know, I want to say like a 6 or a 5. Yeah. Um, and you can get to places in the game like Leviathan. If you could do this at Leviathan, taking max defense, and now you have this defense shield, you will be able to just P-neck the entire thing. Um, you can nearly already do That'd it. You can, just about get, you, can, you, you, you can just about be killed through prayer from Leviathan right now. But the second you have these things and you make them part of the meta... People will use it to. That's not, true. It's 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 not cheesing, but they'll use it to get these achievements. That defense works so differently in this game compared way. to others, where it's like a thing yeah. is rolling against you to see if it hits you. So if it doesn't hit you, it's zero. If it does hit you, it's its full hit, whatever yeah. it is. That is not normal. Most of those are like damage reduction on armor, like they'll do percent less damage or yeah. things like that. We don't have that. It's just it rolls. Does it hit you or not? Yes, no. So the thing with defense is if you have like max tank. It's like, yeah, you'll get away with a, sh- a lot, a lot, a lot, like if you're wearing Justy. But eventually, you're going to get unlucky. You'll get a, a, a roll of like three things hitting you at once because yeah. that's just how it works. So it's really frustrating. It's like a frustrating mechanic, and I don't know what the solution is. But yeah, it, it definitely doesn't feel good. What they've done is most bosses don't even roll against defense. It's really common. A lot of bosses just hit you. And yeah, you it's against obnoxious. Them. And more and more they're doing it as well because they, re- they recognize it's a problem. Yeah. That, that's like the, mod over sexes. Stand there, you get hit. You can reduce most it with melee, but most it's still going to hit you. A, most of Nexus attacks just hit you. Uh, Verzik just hits you. Uh, not with the ranged yeah. attack, but the mage attack. A lot of things just straight up hit you. It would just be cool if most shields actually had a passive effect like an Ellie. Where there still is a chance that you get hit the full amount, so you're never like safe, technically. I th- but I think you've got like a... This, you'd, yeah, go for it. You'd have to, you'd have to have a fundamental combat mechanic change you would you definitely yeah, defense would it's yeah. just not good the way it is yeah. i don't know yeah. something about like just the shield slot in general i think is annoying like it just it bothers me that everything in melee I'd, you I'd are like wearing remember, a defender i'd like if they'd remember the spectral a little more there's a lot of things that i know with. they've completely forgotten it like thralls and like everything in toa um it doesn't work with deadly prayers it doesn't work against the thralls in the monkey room it just doesn't work on anything like they totally forgot it existed I know. it's it's obnoxious not that you'd use it but it's like you w- i mean if, if things had like imagine imagine the spectral for example just just spectral alone imagine incoming magic hits are reduced by 50 percent if you're wearing the shield just magic hits only so now like this shield is very powerful defending against certain mage attacks you know like that that would just be so neat because you would actually have an incentive to do like shield flicks here and there and you know just camping it if you're just lazy and just like i just think it's so much cooler than just wearing a defender for every fucking piece of content old school is quite unique in the sense that most other games will not allow you to just instantly swap gear yeah um I like and therefore have it personally. I, I like I like that it can be done. I yeah. don't think it makes for a fun mechanic though. I don't want to be swapping my no. gear twenty four seven while fighting something. Um, I, I like the idea of big gear swaps at fundamental points in the fight, where it's asking you to do it for like, uh, you know, like a DPS check or something. But mm. for actually engaging with bosses on a base level, not so interesting for me, in my opinion. If it's um, I could see it being a thing where it's like you flick on a shield for. Maybe there's a big dragon fire attack you can catch if you put on a dragon fire shield, for example. Like something like that. If it's like a mechanic with the fight, I could see it. It's really frustrating getting very little 
CMs does it a ton. You, you're constantly switching to Missouri because Ink is out of your armor. So, like, every time you do an attack, you switch to Missouri and you switch back. So it's like, it's not a ton of benefit. It just cuts down some chip damage. It doesn't feel like you're doing a lot. It's just, like, a thing you do the whole time. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, I'm getting a big reward out of doing this. It feels satisfying. It doesn't really feel good. Uh, yeah. That that's what that's why I personally think like that bulwark prayer or whatever the hell it would be called would, or a gar I think it was guardian is what I called it. The guardian prayer. That would be cool yeah. because then that's like a significant thing where it, it doesn't feel as shitty. It's just putting on two pieces of armor and then immediately switching it back. You have a percent chance of taking as it's like yeah. Or know? okay, imagine this. I, I'm just throwing out ideas. Imagine you know when like you're um like in the combat tab where you're selected. First of all, there's a problem with range. I I accuracy and defensive should not be an additional tick i'm sorry like we need to fundamentally change that like that's rapid should always be the thing they, they should have differences where like rapids extra damage accuracies ex, a significant amount of extra accuracy and then defense like gives you defense or whatever anyway still that's think, still think long range is okay for the record but it's just obnoxious that, and like rapid is silly an additional tick is just stupid um Anyway, uh, but I was going to say, imagine, so now there's offensive. Imagine if you're wearing a shield. I think this would actually kind of have some balance. So now you have the offensive things where you're switching between, you know, accurate and defensive or whatever. And then you have the shield where now you're deciding, am I going to protect against melee, like incoming melee, incoming range, or incoming mage? So technically, no shield ever has full protection against all attacks. It would just be one of the styles and you can switch it as you go along so it still will have just overall defense but now you're like selectively deciding what's gonna what's gonna have damage negation based on your selection there's so many bosses that are the attack is calculated instantly so yeah yeah and that's fine it would kind of be a choice of what's the most What's the thing that hurts you the most? When you yeah, no, no. Usually, and I, I, I think the reason I'm bringing it up is simply because it's not going to have damage negation with all incoming attacks. Now, obviously, if a boss is just attacking with one style, it would. But with challenging well, it's not adding bosses. skill is the point. It's like if you're catching attacks with a, the right shield or something, that's like adding skill. I don't know if that's necessarily good either, but... I guess yeah. my thing is yeah, like, like in, in regards to you guys saying, you know, if you start adding shields, then you can just Phoenix necklace everything. Like imagine the shield literally could only protect it, only had that damage negation against one style. So in a lot of situations, if you get attacked with a different style and you haven't switched, like you're going to get fucked anyway. I think I there's know. some big problems with it still. Imagine running into Inferno with a range shield on and then just praying mage for the entire thing. I mean, maybe you found on paper, but breaking yeah. game breaking yeah just one of those things know. where a shield would actually be worth something at that point though it'd be kind of cool um, i'm not gonna lie i'm not invested in making shields good again <laughs> just i don't know <laughs> I, I feel i feel like we have useful shields mm -hmm. um and in order to make shields like actually perform the defense mechanic itself it, the way you roll defense has to change and that's yeah, not gonna that. happen just my two cents but yeah i, I mean to be the, fair the... I, I i definitely agree that like it's just lowering the skill gap mm -hmm. entirely um i think the main problem is just defender scape i think that's i i don't know why i just have a concern with that where we do have all these shields and they're just garbage <laughs> there's no reason for them it's not defender scape it's damage scape bucklers yeah it's damage your scape. choice it's always Buckler, yeah. and it's always uh, Avernic, and it's yeah, always um, yeah. Ward. That's, that's Obviously, my we concern. have a two-handed Shadow, but it would always be Ward if you're using a one-handed staff. So mm -hmm. anything that's damage is what you pick, always. Yep. Very true. I'll tell you what, though, in terms of this, about the, the the mechanics of taking in and receiving damage, P2 Warden, little discussion. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, for basically, P2 Warden takes your damage and your accuracy and combines it into a damage roll. So if you have like zero accuracy but good max hits, you'll still hit decently, but you won't hit as hard as if you had all your accuracy gear on. Mm. And th this mechanic alone is is extremely well received from those who've looked at it, and most other people don't seem to mind it, which is baffling to me because I thought there'd be an outcry about how this is like breaking the fundamentals of the game a bit. But this mechanic actually allows for things like defense shields to have mm -hmm. their place if it was used against the player. And yep, for sure. 
Um, I want to see more of it. I, I know that I know the devs themselves are keen on adding it to more places. Me personally, I would be happy seeing like an entire raid built around it. Um, it would mean that the more switches you do, the more rewarded you are. If it, if it's against the player, then the more defense you are you are using yourself, the more rewarding it is. It tremendously changes the way player skill um, interacts with gear swaps. It's interesting or, to have like a well, low RNG thing where it's like yeah, yeah, for sure. You're not rolling for random hits. It's a thing that's averaging like everything together, and it's just how yeah. well you're switching and doing everything. It makes speedruns more fulfilling, more interesting. It takes away from the RNG element from those who like it, though. But the actual skill in the speedrun is ultimately going to go up because of that. Yeah, which true. I think people would be a bit more accepting of. All right. So going back to the No Monkey video, we're gonna talk about a few different things and kind of have a little mini brawl. <laughs> so let's we'll an hour off. Uh, so let's talk. <laughs> l let's talk QA. Let's talk QA. Addy and No Monkey. You can either of you can round start one off. fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's do this. Let's go. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Talking quality assurance. So, I had my. I've been working on this video for a month. I'll just say, a, like a long, long time. I've been like slowly working on it, chipping away. So yeah. this isn't like a thing I did in a weekend or something. Um. I had a section on quality assurance, so I said, um, I feel like in general, over recent years, it feels like almost every single update has some major game-breaking bug. And I had, um, I've had people collect bugs for me so I could get a comprehensive like list that's in my Discord. Um, just in general, like the list of bugs that we've had over time. Mm -hmm. um, and I just feel like quality assurance has been lacking, especially lately. I don't know if it's always been this way and I just didn't notice, but. Right. Can I, um, I, I can address that if that's the whole thing. Yeah. That's okay. I, mean, I think that's it. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. One, one thing to get into this beforehand is what is the fix for most of these things? Because one point at the beginning of the video, which I think a lot of people latched onto, is that is it just a case you think that Jagrex can pour money into it and increase the budget for things and really invest? And is that a solution for, for, how much of this is that a solution for, basically? Um, I think there are things that are absurd that have gone in the game that, like, they definitely have the budget to prevent. The things like the right. diagonal movement, having the stall on your character, which would have been, t it could have been tested by just clicking in a direction. The things like with the axe hitting 500s, which could have been tested by just swinging it at an enemy. Things like that. <laughs> There's things mm -hmm. that are very hard to find um, that I had in there, but there's a lot of things that can be stopped. I feel like, yeah. and it's absurd okay. that they go in like that. Yeah, so I, I agree it's silly and absurd. But I yeah. will also say that for things such as the movement and the axes, as far as they were aware, the axe was coded correctly, and it was something else they changed in an update that broke the axe. Hence, spaghetti malfunction, right? Yeah, sure, sure. The actual coding itself was fine, and it tends to be the case that for these updates they release, they're actually fine until they put something else out. Um, and I understand that is still a QA problem. They can still go back and test these things, but another I think another that it's... thing too is um, betas yeah. affecting main game. Like we saw major bugs coming with the prayer beta that, that oh, caused yeah. the unlimited stamina in um, Inferno and things like that. Yeah, I feel like that should definitely be that should not be affecting main game. I feel like well, the, definitely... the way that the the way those worlds work is that when they update the engine to work on beta, they also update it for main game. Right, but they simply yeah, exactly. don't allow the rewards to work. Right, so yeah. I, I don't know how they would... This is an internal question, I guess, for them, because I don't know how they would be able to do that otherwise. It just seems to be that's their system. When they, when they do the worlds like that in one go, they have to do... Right, so the question the is, is that is that acceptable, that um, the infrastructure is well, built this way? That's that's the I, thing. I don't, and is I don't, it worth devoting hmm. time and resource to it? Maybe to the question is, like, is, I don't know if it's even possible is the problem. Maybe. So some of, the, some of these things will definitely be, like, an internal discussion, or they, they may not be able to tell us, right? From what the, I from what I can see, is is like, I just it's just not. Yeah, the big thing is I don't know internally how things work. I'm just right. voicing my things I'm seeing, the issues. Yes. So, mm, I'm a that, player. Yeah. I'm not a dev. So I'm just like, hey, these are these are the things I see. <laughs> of course. I do wish, um, as far as the method they choose to uh, solve these problems with, and like the design process, I wish there was more from Jagex, personally, that, uh, on the sense of like even a YouTube video once every year that detailed some design process 
or they've some of the that. internal workings. They've they, done, they've done it before. Vlogs. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've done it before, and they go into some more detail. And I'm hoping they ramp it up even more in the future mm -hmm. to give players an understanding of why you know what what is the actual game you play on the inside, and why is it that maybe sometimes stuff doesn't work, and maybe that's it's not it doesn't matter if it's acceptable or not. They can't help it. Um, I don't. I definitely don't know about the idea of budget helping that. Um, maybe that is just purely on their end. But I also don't know if it's fair to speculate that's the case because it might just be one of those things that's going to cost an absurd amount and not have any guaranteed yield. Which is why it's a bit like, maybe it seems a bit unfair to, to blame them on that It, it feels, as things. a player, it feels like it shouldn't. They feel like very simple things. Yeah. So if it, no, is, if it is a thing where it's like, no, it's a major like issue and there's no solving it, I'd, I'd love for them to lay that out. Be more open, I guess? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I agree then. Definitely, I, so at, essentially as a player, it doesn't feel good. You say what you see and that's fair, but internally yeah. more openness towards some of these issues would probably go a long way to preventing players from having to even voice it in the first place. It would be much, much less frustrating. It. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's move on to QOL then. Yeah, let's do it. So quality okay. of life updates. Um, so from the perspective of high level player, points I made were... There's a lot of things with um, speed running and just high-level PVM in general that are frustrating and annoying. Um, there's a mm -hmm. lot of things with charges that are daily capped, things like cape swaps um, from Magic Cape. Uh, you get five a day. That's your yes. limit. Um, things Fallador like shield. Explorer's Ring, Falador Shield, both have yep. daily limits. All the days. Um, also talked about things like Turiel for Inferno tasks and how it's frustrating having to go do Turiel to get tasks to do speed runs. Yes. Um, and now we could add Awaken Leviathan as well. It's like almost impossible to speedrun it. Um, inaccessible. Yeah. I didn't really talk about this in the video, but that's yeah. It's true. I don't I don't know if that's QOL, but it's it's prohibitive um, to do. I'm gonna just yeah. jump in real quick and just talk about the spellbook swapping. Yeah. Yeah. So has anybody come up with a good enough solution to this? This, that doesn't this affect is, PvP and all these other things. My yeah, solution true. was um, give one or two swaps instead of five, and then make it recharge at a location. So it's not the if you make it unlimited swaps, like some people say, then mm -hmm. the issue is you change spell book every single time you do an attack. Every single time you're, you're summoning a thrall and venging at every single location. There's no downside. You're always using it, and it becomes the best and slot and necessary everywhere, which is not good. Um, for obvious reasons. It becomes meta at every single location. It's probably yeah. not ideal. Um, so if you make it one or two swaps, you make it recharge at a location, so you can't just spam it inside it. If it's a recharge, but the item you can bring into a raid, then it's pointless. Like, you just bring that item and the cap. Yeah. So it has to be at a location, and you can make it a sync of some kind. Runes, whatever you want. Um, and then allow it to be recharged. So, quick question. It, yeah. Obviously, this has already been ingrained in the meta. So I'm just yeah. wondering, would in like a just theoretically, would it be better if there was just no such thing as spellbook swaps? Would that just in, kind of in hindsight, of course, yeah, I'd probably, say the same yeah, thing right. about Inferno tasks. It would be better if there okay, was never so, a task. Okay, so, so so here here's just a, like a kind of like a shitty solution that I just thought of. Like, what if you literally just could not spellbook swap in instances? So, so it to so, an extent, yeah. Anywhere where you're in an instance that's not in the main game, you literally just cannot use it. So now it just takes it away from most metas. It kind of solves the problem, but there's a lot of depth that it also has. That's the and problem. And it's not so it's much like, fun just, to remove the depth. I know. And so uh, it, just, it just sucks that like we, they, they have these items, like Explorer's Ring, like for example, it's just like, and Fally Shield. It's like these, just these diary items that were literally not meant to be used for like PVM and stuff, but now they're just no. ingrained in the meta. Yeah. And, and so we've basically mm -hmm. limited ourselves and now we're butthurt at like just the fact that we're limited, even though they were, it's just so tough. I feel like the only real way to solve it is like something really arbitrary, like no monkey, like you were saying, that it's just like, you have to be at a certain place, do this, use this. It's like, imagine it just wasn't even a thing. Just we have to now design the meta around not using it. But I, I then agree that there is depth being added from it. Yeah, it's a 2020 hindsight thing. Like, it, yeah, it would have been better. But now that we have it, it feels really awful to take it away. It might actually just be for the better to do so, but I just don't think players would really be in favor of it. 
It's so tough. It's, um, it's frustrating having records locked behind nerfed things. I don't know. Like nerfing yeah. never feels good ever. Well, the, I, I don't have that big of a problem with that, mainly because it's temporary, because the gear will continually progress. But and you've so, still temporarily, like, killed speedrunning. Like, if the CM solo true. wreck is locked behind that cape, I, I just don't run it anymore. Like, there's no point. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, there, there is that downside, but it's temporary to get rid of something permanently, like... But, but the time until we get new items to make it unlocked again is potentially years. A long time. Like, Mm -hmm. up to up to five years potentially that's insane i wouldn't say five years but well if assuming raid three extreme. didn't bring out raids four didn't yeah the extreme like more realistically two years yeah. but that's still two years yeah. yeah okay um yeah um what if i'm just wondering like i don't know it, it would almost be cool if like th so this is something i was thinking of you know how like the lunar spellbook has a spellbook swap option on there like imagine yeah, just sure. imagine just all spell books at the very bottom of the spell had a level ninety nine spell book swap, but it took some actual significant time for it to change fully. So you can't just literally just constantly abuse it. I've been really really enjoying spell book swap at uh, Leviathan. Actually, it's very like high skill to use. Yeah, no, is, I've been seeing you doing it. It is high skill, but I feel like that becomes an ability. And abilities that force you to stay inside your your spell book or like your inventory in that sense don't feel as fun to use. It becomes like almost a very generic MMORPG ability. Sure. And I don't think it's quite fitting for old school to want to like deep dive into your spellbook 24-7 to make things work. Um, yeah, that's fair. So it's, imagine... It's not, like a, it's not the biggest problem ever, but it's a problem. Okay. I, I'm just imagining like a spellbook swap that's technically on all spellbooks, but it takes longer than what traditionally is already a spellbook swap. So it's something where you... There. Oh, you want it to be less, surely. <laughs> I mean, you would want to, but then it just becomes like a cooldown thing, where it's like, okay, I'm going to constantly be ver venging, constantly be throwing, constantly bosses be th thing. Like, you mean? Basically? Yeah. It, so, like, if oh, you're okay. in a CM, for example, like you could use it, but you would have to like red click on the door, and then you're doing the animation for you know seven or eight yeah. ticks, where you can't just do it in between attacks. I don't really believe players would find this much more than infuriating but i mean yeah. it would be but is it more infuriating uh, that you have a daily limit right now that's the real thing i think there's better solutions than that though. okay yeah i'm just i'm just curious i'm i'm not in the speed running game so like i'm just sharing my outside thoughts it's really tricky because a lot of the time they feel i feel like sometimes not this isn't like against you or anything but sometimes there are solutions that come up and sometimes there are just really good solutions that just work and it's much less so that players should have to find the solution that they think is right, as opposed to like, you no. Know, if you can't shoot down this one example that's fantastic, you don't need to add more ideas. You can just embrace that and use it. It's true. Mm -hmm. And in this case, something like deleting the entire ability to use it, or what Gnome said about recharging it in a location, if it works, just that's it. That's the end of the conversation. Just do it if it works. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. I guess my only concern is like I feel like there will be ways to kind of get around i don't know i i like no monkeys idea where it's like you go to a bank but it's just like <sighs> oh you gotta critique the ideas just, it's not like perfect but yeah you're right i, I was picturing um you like know. house um house altar so it's like mm, yeah so that's maybe where your, that's where you maybe would your own house time. altar so you'd Ooh, go there no. and you'd bring um that's a, some item that was that's a great suggestion yeah yeah i wouldn't even say you have to bring an item just go to your house altar just and that it recharges it for two Sure, that Thanks. would work. I, I, yeah. I'm figuring they want to sync items out. It's like a free opportunity to okay. do it, but you could just maybe. have it be free, recharge. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's that's my thing. Is like if, if that idea is like sound, and maybe you can add some minor things like a sync to it. There's just yeah. no need to take the conversation further. If that's the winning idea, that's sick. We take it. We run with it. We use it. Okay. So imagine, and, and that's also sorry, that, but like this is also the thing with other things like Fang. Um, yeah. If Fang has good solutions, such as make it so it only works on stab style, the, the accuracy role. Is there a problem with that? If not, like let's just do it. We don't need to have the discussion. The simplest solution is always the best, usually. Yeah, yeah almost. Always. Sometimes that sometimes it just works. You don't okay. have like your own preferred one, but I know we're getting sidetracked. I'm just think I'm just thinking right now. Okay, so imagine you go to your POH and you go to your spellbook altar, and that actually just recharges all of your diary things, um, mm -hmm. and oh, it, yeah. it and, and it takes a fee from your butler, like 50k or 100k or whatever. It's just like you've recharged, but you have to That's go good. to your POH in order to recharge it. 
I don't think but, anything should be gately capped. So yeah, as long as you have a way around it, I think. Yeah. So is five really spellbook swap? Would that inherently change the meta? Because now you can constantly recharge five, and now you're going to be using five in every single well, CM. Well, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't change the meta because you already do. That's the point. But you're if not you're using five. Again, you already do. Oh, okay. So well, you, is, if you, you had five, let me think about CMs. Right. You yeah. technically could swap to Venge at like Vasa, and then swap I back guess, now. Yeah. So it it would change things a little bit. I, I guess it's a question more so about does this change like this, the way we play the game without speedrunning? Does this change it for like the average player? Because if oh. you can do that and now you and now you have access to things like shield, are you just going to bring a shield on every chambers run then visit your POA? Maybe. That's why it would have to have a cost. It would have to be right, like maybe. you're yeah. paying your butler 100k yeah. to recharge this. My thought was poor like way more than the prayer points it gives into it, like 10 to 20 prayer potions or something like that. Just so it's like not worth it for cost, but it's worth it for that slot if yeah. you need it. Oh, yeah, man, that's I just, probably a better way of doing it. I'll be honest. I just, yeah, that there there is a problem. I think the spellbook swap is its own thing. I genuinely think the ring and the shield would be a problem if it could just be recharged. Be, uh, it's not that big of a problem though. That's the thing. It's just like like a, a, a shield bit. is only a, sh a shield is a restore and a half. Yeah, and the question is whether or not true. like a hundred k fee of charging that shield is something you want. You're to right. Use for your that, daily that's fair. You're right. You're right. I don't that's... think any daily item is that powerful. You're right. So I think it's okay. Okay. The shield does feel like necessary for Inferno. I feel like once you've burned a shield, it feels like not worth running almost. Yeah. Like if, if, if I if, okay. if I could run it, I would run it. If I could use it all the time, hundred percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. Where it's like there's a fee. You have to go to your POH. Mm -hmm. You restore all your dailies. And boom. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's run we'll it back about, to the. Where do we start? Still? We were just talking about general we talk about, for high level stuff. Yeah. So, what's the idea? Like, tutorial has been in the game for since release, whatever, mm -hmm. and it's the it's the fastest way to get a specific task. Um, God, this 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 is a topic I've probably talked about more than anyone. I guess <laughs> I think you've done way more tutorial than me uh, too. So. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, I'll do my thing on this. So, Material exists, and people a lot of the time try and come up with solutions that just include things like delete Turial, give us infinite tasks. And I don't think that's a very sort of good way of going about trying to fix these problems because people sometimes don't realize you delete Turial, and now what's your next best way of getting a task? I've got to do Slayer, shit, it's like 50 times longer. So mm -hmm. oftentimes the thing you hate isn't really um, the problem at hand. It's, sol it's, solving, it's solving the question of how to get a specific task in a good way. Yes. So all these things, ig ignoring like the solution tutorial, and there are some good ones, these things constitute high-level PVM annoyances. And not just tutorial, but lots of different little things that we've, some of we talked about, so maybe not, but like there are, they exist. And they have solutions that seem good. Now, some of the, some of the solutions, these QRL solutions, take time to implement. And I guess the question here for QOL is that we know what the problems are. We can give distinct solutions. Why aren't they doing them? Why, why is this such a problem for QOL to, to look at and be like, something's clearly not right. People are doing thousands of hours, literally thousands of hours of a Turial Slayer Master. Like just easy ass, boring NPC killing, cannoning, sitting there. Like, the high-level players are killing cows. <laughs> the high-level players are killing the cows. It's the yes. first NPC you kill when you enter the game. It's like, why? <laughs> Yes, and half the people say, "Well, you did it to yourself. You want to speed run, therefore you do it." But like, yeah, the point is that there are enough players who want to do it, who have fun and enjoy it. And more so than that, anyone who wants a specific task has to go through that process, and that's not a very good themed way to do so. So, so like, why don't they? Why don't they implement these things? First thing that comes to mind is that you're changing it for a small amount of players, and therefore the time spent on doing this isn't worthwhile compared yeah. to the updates they could deliver for the wider community that would benefit and make more people enjoy the game more. That's argument number one, which has a good amount of validity to it, but falls into one of those things personally where I think that if we're 5% of the game or 5% of the game have interacted with Turiel to get a specific task, one in 20 updates should have been to fix Turiel, and by now that should have happened. That's I know I've kind of answered my own thing with it, but like... So, let, well, let I me... I feel like... Yeah, yeah go, go ahead, for it. Oh, I was just going to say, is is the best way just to make it so you can use your Slayer helmet but not get any Slayer XP? So you can just keep running Infernos, have the same boosts, but you're not gaining any XP for it. It's very really good, XP. but because you're, on, because you're doing a specific Slayer task, it feels like you're bypassing the Slayer part of it. I'll, I'll give the Turiel solution like, as I see it, okay. as, as a better way of doing it. 
in, instead of having like random NPCs you kill and a, and a chance to get a Zuck task, make it so you can right click a Slayer Master or like assign Slayer Master and then pick a thing to say, I want a specific task. And then you pick your specific task from the list, a bit like in leagues. And then it gives you an option to like, okay, you want this task, please kill three of XYZ NPCs and a certain amount of each. Depending on the task you pick, the NPCs you kill will be a tier below that. So if I choose to kill Zuck, I'll be asked to kill maybe two of a band two Bandos and a Zolra and 30 Mind Goblins. And that will be enough to guarantee you the task if you receive if you do that. That process will take approximately 10 to 15 minutes, which is about twice as short, if not more, than doing Turiel on average. And there's no RNG involved, you get the task at the end. You are asking a Slayer Master for a specific high level task. You are therefore going to do Slayer and gaining Slayer XP in different places and various bosses around the game. You're still getting Slayer XP for all of that. And at the end of it, you get your task. I think, um, that's okay, the whole so, solution. so personally, I think that's a bit selfish. Uh, and, and the only reason I say that is because it just sounds like you're just doing boss Slayer. I actually, well, so, so this is just my, uh, little just meet you in the middle what if there was a point thing where you spend i don't know 1000 or 2000 slayer points and now you have doubled your boss task chance no. so the problem the, the problem no. is rng yeah. the problem but is you're RNG. but you're but you're doubling your chance it doesn't of getting matter it. it doesn't matter Any, the anything that just increases chance we, we already have three tasks from zuck right yeah that didn't fix it it's triple it's we have triple the task yeah it doesn't matter it doesn't fix it because you're still doing the same thing to get the same thing. Even if it's faster, or it's still the same problem. But isn't that your you whole point, it. is just making it faster? No, no, no it's I about want consistency. It consistency. I want it as so, well. so wouldn't it literally... So, but you but you want... My, my so solution... You want to eat your cake and have it too. So like, as in, like you still want all your Slayer point. You still want your Slayer XP. Well, you can get reduced Slayer XP. And it would not be efficient I, to do I'm just those thinking if, if the sheer problem is you just want to do Inferno, why not just make it so as soon as you've completed Inferno, you can go in there without Slayer XP but use the Slayer Helmet boost. But then it are sounds you, like... Are, you, are, you, are you, you're not doing Slayer, are you? The point know, is but, trying to theme the, it to the game correctly. But I, I thought this idea was about like trying to just enjoy speed running for the sake of speed no. running. No, 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 no. That's, that's, the, that's the most... That's the most co it's about getting a specific task. In a consistent okay, so this is and a reasonable fashion. My, my this is what people always was, confuse. Um, talk in video. I, I said this. It's talk to Six Jad guy. He has yeah. a get task button. After you beat Six Jad, you get task. You don't have XP. You don't get points. But Addy is saying that there's value to like the downtime between Inferno. I'm saying that, that I'm saying I'm saying it? that if you want if you want task rewards in terms of mm -hmm. damage and accuracy, you should be have you should have to engage with Slayer. You want it to be Slayer still, like themed. I want it to, I want it to be correctly themed and I want it to be consistent in what it I gives you. I think that's you. fair. If it's like a 15 minute thing that you do to get the yeah. task, I think that makes a lot of sense. You're asking for a specific task. A lot of people use this to get specific pets, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just limited to speedruns. That's that's the big difference in a lot of people because because I do Inferno, everyone's like, you just want it for Inferno. I'm like, no, I'm trying to solve the problem for the entire game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's why it's so important to do that. I see. So, 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 in in essence, what you want is you want to go to the Slayer Master, ask for a specific task, like I really yes. want to kill this, and then you're assigned yes. three to five tasks beforehand, but you're gonna guarantee Small. get it. Yeah, and, and and time them so it's around about fifteen minutes, and they're themed to the difficulty you ask for. If I ask for a cow task, I'm gonna be asked to kill goblins and spiders. If I ask for a bandos task, I'm gonna be asked to kill like. 20 gargoyles, a Zolra, and one other thing. Not to, And you, you theme it to the level. It's just an idea. You don't even have to theme it. And you might get reduced Slayer. It certainly wouldn't be efficient. But at the end of it, you get what you want. And you're it engaging is. with Slayer. And it, it's a big system is the problem. I see. It I is see. absolutely but it's a, but it's a good system. Inferno. Like you have Lizardman Shamans still for CM. And then you also have all the, the bosses for pets as well. There's also yeah. speed runs for bots tasks that you have to grind. Like people were spending yeah. like a week trying to get Muzba tasks, I remember. Trying to go for wreck. Because it's yeah. like a one in six hundred or something. Jesus, there's a lot of a lot of elements of the game that could benefit from okay. A change. Okay, that, that, yeah, I, that's true. I can I can respect that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So we we have some like good solutions, right? Let, let's run it back to QL because we we love to get distracted, but it's good. Um, <laughs> why doesn't Jagex make these changes? Yeah. So, first point again was something like. Um, they could better spend their time elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I already answered this in the sense that I, I think that 
based on the amount of players that do it, it's like five, it is it is actually five percent of people maybe. One in twenty updates should hit that spot to try and fix it. That was I, I know I'm just literally answering my own like problem. Here, I think they do. Why don't they do that? I guess they do plenty of QOL. There is a lot of QOL updates. Yeah, but it feels like those get missed, for sure. Yeah, it feels like they get. And I of, don't feel like they're necessarily yeah. any like more intensive. And this is me being ignorant. I don't know, but they don't feel. Ooh. Alarm, sorry. Good morning. I don't feel like they're necessarily any um, any more difficult to implement necessarily, um, for a lot of them. So it just a lot. That's why a lot of it. I think some of it comes down to polling because a lot of these changes do get polled. Yeah, and true. so if, if if you try and explain that to someone who really just doesn't read polls, and, and make no mistake for anyone watching, people simply do not read polls, or they do not understand well enough to make an informed choice. This is just how it is with polls. Um, I can point to several cases about this, but if people don't read polls and they don't understand and they're not engaged enough to really make an informed choice, the chances of something like a massive change to how getting a specific task works uh, for Turiel What's the chance it just doesn't pass? And then if that happens, what's the chance you'll ever be able to introduce something that tries to fix that? Probably never. It's going to be like Divine Spirit Shield all over again. So so the issue is that it needs to be really good so it passes a poll, because they need to well, pass the poll, or otherwise it's not just it'll about being good, ignored. it's about players' perception of it. It needs to be, yeah, parsable, or, yeah. Player's perception of it needs to be a good one. It, it can't just be like, ah, they're deleting Turiel because they're speedrunners and they hate Turiel. And, and yet people will not see past that. It, maybe it's part of the wording and how they put it in the blog. Um, but even if they did that, the fact that anyone can just vote on it to like say, oh, I don't really give a shit, vote no. It, it's frustrating to say that even if a good solution came up, maybe they can't get it through polls. It's scary mostly, but, uh, you know. Hmm. But that's one big thing. Um, I had another big thing coming on this. What was it? Well, I'll just share just one last thought on the Slayer thing. I think one of the concerns is as soon as you've started putting this thing where, okay, you can consistently get a certain task that you want all the time, it yeah. literally leads to everything is now Slayer. Like you, you can't just go kill Bandos for Bandos because it would just be worth the 15 minutes to go kill some well, other shit and then you, everything's you, you, on task. You can balance it to make it so it's not efficient. If you have a 15 minute yeah. window which, on which you have to get those tasks, maybe you don't get awarded like 100 Bandos. Maybe it's only like 10. Yeah. And I think it, purely, it just, purely that balance can fix it up. I think, I don't know. In, like in my opinion, I think uh, they could make some changes. So this is just my personal take on this is I think we should have a like a like a permanent unlock to double boss tasks and that alone has already increased all of your boss chances um by double and um, then you can have a preferred boss list and this this can be the yeah. same thing with tizars where you can double your tizars and it's just like okay now you're getting double inferno tasks basically like the the preferred list is incredible from rs3 and it, yeah. it's more than mm -hmm. double i think it is actually just a doubling but let's make no mistake here, players, not regularly, but if you do lots of Inferno speeds, maybe once a yeah. month, mm -hmm. you will go 10 hours dry of a task. It's efficiently not a solution playing. to Inferno tasks, no. And, and if I was to go 5 hours dry, I'd still be pissed and still not enjoy it. Yeah. That's why the consistency is so key, because unless you're going to make it like a 1 in 5, um, it's it's just not enough. Ideally, and, it's you, and, 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 again, you... and again, it feels bad. But Ideally, it's a thing you go out of your way to do. It doesn't it's not an increase to kills per hour, technically, because if you just killed it off task and didn't do this thing, then it would be better. I also don't like that you can't kill Slayer bosses off task as a separate thing. I, I like that it's like you get a Slayer task and it's like, oh, it's probably worth going and doing that. That that's, feels like the appeal of Slayer is like, I don't know, it feels weird to be like almost forced to once you get a task, but it's kind of off topic. Um, yeah, yeah. I. It, it has to be like not increasing kills per hour overall and like, but a thing that's consistent, like you can get the task you want if you need it for some reason. Interesting. Definitely can be done. Definitely can be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next one. <laughs> um, update history. Mm hmm. Let me get my chart. series of series of unfortunate events or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold up. 
Yeah, so NVIDIA, I, I made a cute little graphic and I just kind of like rigged up every update from every major update from 2016 to 2023. I skipped QOL. Um, oh, I didn't feel it was like super relevant. Yeah. Interruption. I mm -hmm. just absolutely bust out laughing when you said a good update was the Chaos Altar. God damn it, man. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. But it's oh, Iron no. Man. The, for Iron Man, it's just so good. It's game fun breaking. out of made. It's really fun. <laughs> anyway, continue. Hilarious. Um, so yeah, I just kind of looked at it overall, like how I felt about like each year and like the updates and what they did. Um, and I just kind of went through it year by year. So I felt like I, I ordered it by like the level of, I did high level, mid level, low level, um, and I did quests, skilling, PVP, and then I did other for things like game modes, things like Twisted League and Trailblazer. And I just like listed out the like every single update. Um, so what I found is we had like 2017, 2018 were golden years. Those were like absolutely amazing for people at a high skill level that wanted content. 2017 was ridiculous. That is so absurd how much content they put in the game in one year. We had Chambers and then they put out Inferno like six months later. Um, end of the year was Grotesque. We also had Fossil Island added that year, that full expansion, a um, bunch of quests, uh, things like Major Arena 2, that kind of thing. Um, uh, a couple Slayer monsters, various like scaling activities. Revenant Caves were also added, which obviously that had issues as well. But big, big year for a lot of content. It's kind of crazy to look back and like think about that happening now. Like a major raid and then a major like basically raid added like two, two in one year is absurd. Yeah. And then year after was also like amazing we had cm tob uh vorkath was added really good dragon slayer 2 everything that comes with that one of the one of the things i saw someone mention on like reddit was me going through and they're like well you looked at all these and you said you only had like two things on here that were low level so i have briafita and fourth fourthos dungeon i think you could argue fourthos is mid-level even but yeah um the thing with that is low level is such a short like period of the game that that really should be a tiny section i feel like and i don't i don't think so i don't in, in see terms of people I've, I've asked people like with serachnus like hey you're mid-level how much serachnus have you done and the answer is always zero 27 yeah. I, think, I think you could say <laughs> that's just a problem with serachnus but like it's it's hard to add content like that i think it's the issue of like adding pets to things like that but there's definitely value in adding things for low levels that like teach them mechanics and get them like rolling into the game. But I think they've really struggled with low level content in general. Not had a good way of doing it. Bri Bria Fida and um, Obor, I don't feel like are things that like low level seek out. It's I think really the only like piece of low level content I feel as good as like Barrows. Yes. And Barrows even that doesn't teach you enough. mechanics though. You're still just no. hitting things. It's just basic combat and prayer. Yeah. But at least it's like a, a complex activity. Um, yeah, so point was 2017, 2018 is like big, super complex years. Like I feel like they added a lot for us. Mm -hmm. And then big period of like nothing. 2019, 2020. There aren't bad years at all. We had, um, we had uh, a lot some of the elves added 2019. Well. Like loads of things added. Say it again. We had a lot of leagues. A lot Dead of leagues too. Yeah. Well. That was a, and that's a lot. Those, of, those filled up some stuff. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and then there was a lot of, I remember so much complaining in like 2020, um, that we're just not getting any, getting anything hard. Um, yes. There's just been a lack of hard content. So 2021, they're like, um, trying to put in some things to like tide us over until the next raid comes out. Cause they were a long ways off completing Toa. Um, so we got things like hard mode tab, um, jag challenges and combat achievements. Um, and Fasani as well. Just a lot of those just felt underwhelming. Like they were not. They they were very clearly like low low dev time. Um, I don't want to say rush job, but you know, lacking lacking in depth. I was feeling. Sure. And then years after that, you know, 2022, um, we had Next added and Toa. Those were the PBM updates for that year. That kind of speaks for itself. Uh, Toa's, a, we've talked about it, but Toa doesn't appeal to a high-level um, player base. It doesn't scale up well. 
it's not fun to engage with. No. And then this year, now we've had Awaken bosses. So that's really, really cool. Um, I really like Awaken Leviathan. I think that's my favorite update since 2018. Like, genuinely, I think that's the best boss edition, period. Sure. Um, but the, so the just thing I was noticing was, like, a lack of things with depth. Things right. to grind into. So... We we all know like chambers is very much almost an accident with regards to its depth. Yes, I think most and things are. Yeah, it, but most things generally are. But chambers especially, it, yes. it was just it was like a lucky thing, and it's not to discount it or anything, but it is to say that it was an outlier, and the ability for them to create content on that degree and that of of, of that uh, mechanical depth is extremely hard, if not impossible. Purely yeah, just sure. a luck thing if it gets that level. So, I guess it's fair to say the quantity of of content has probably diminished. And I think I can explain this. I doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't like. You know, it doesn't excuse them of it or anything. But I think I can explain it. Yeah. So, Chambers was the first like big thing. They were trying something out to see how it went, and Inferno was probably planned alongside that to to really give something to the high end player base and also say to old players like we have new stuff. We have actual raids. We have extreme hard challenges to go for. Like come back and try this stuff. Marketing wise, it makes sense. It it, it fits across the board as something good. And then there comes a period where they're still in this position. I, I, this is how I see it. I, they're still in this position where a lot of the early game players, they're not getting new players. They're getting returning players. And so they need to drive more of these updates towards mid-level and early game to allow them to stick around more and try and get some of those players who might have been brought in by the, by the appeal of a raid mm -hmm. to stick around seriously and play. And, and, and that's why we get all these barrage of updates. And then we also have this problem of... Because Chambers is out and Inferno is out and then, you know, maybe Top comes along at some point, they're doing the raid sequels and everything. But in the intermission time, players are becoming so good at the game. And in terms of solving speedruns, the likes of Inferno are maybe the most complex speedrun currently. Definitely. Inferno, Inferno went from a place where up until about a year and a half ago, it was not RNG based in the slightest. It was about how good players were in terms of pushing the skill mechanics the methods, the like, just everything. Yes. And it took a period of time for players to to make that change and get that good. And it took an even longer period for everyone to catch up and, and enter this zone of like insane players, which we now have today. And it's it's only because we're now at this stage of having this crazy, crazy player base at the top level that everything seems lackluster. And that window of like leading up to Tob and then speedrunners developing that point and, and all those good players getting there only just hit um, in that year that we talked about, 2022, where things didn't feel good. Was it 2020, 2022? What, like one of those years, right? 2022 Every was next in Tower, yeah. Yeah, and, and everyone started complaining, like, where is our hard content? Because everyone's at that stage now and the vocal, the vocal amount is growing, growing, growing. Mm -hmm. And then they try to fix it with stuff that was similar to, to the likes of how they thought Chambers release and Top release was, but it's too late because the players are too good. And you still have this compounding problem of like, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough. But maybe it just will never be enough. A A A Awakened Leviathan is, is, and a lot of the DC2 bosses especially in their Awakened conversions, um, they've thrown around the idea, and I think it's fair to say it's like new generation content. It, it's something that is a little bit more engaging. It's a bit more super well designed. And it's easier to balance than the likes of TOA as a raid because it's single encounters. And Awakened mm -hmm. Leviathan, I, I think it's the starting point, I hope, I really do, that it's the starting point to say that this was a success. Players enjoy it, it's fun, and it fits. And it hits those players where they needed to scratch that itch. And like the likes of us, we got, we're going back day after day to get more of it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think, I think, I don't know, hopefully following that explains why people feel the way it is and why the update history laid out in that manner doesn't seem to be like very good on their part but it's actually just how the player base developed i think I that's like a very good i don't think way that's to explain it, it. because no? hmm. I, I think it I plays feel a part. like it's not the whole picture but yeah maybe it is hmm. so there's things like fasani and things like nex so it's like yeah. they're they're definitely very like maybe it is just because I feel like Tob was very intentionally designed. I mean, I was going to say, I wonder if it's just because they have less, uh, more of a grasp on the content and that's made things less interesting inherently. Um, so, so like, because they're maybe 
Because Chambers is weird, is that why it's good? Because yeah, they didn't know what yeah. they were doing? I, this is why it's a bit of an outlier. <laughs> it has, like, stupid depth, and there's no reasonable reason as to why. But it's also maybe not a great encounter in some cases because of it. And because they're trying to design good encounters, these things are lacking. Or they're, like, broken in the ways we don't maybe. expect it to be. The thing is, I feel like Theater of Blood kind of counters that. Just because I feel like everything in... Not everything, but a good chunk of Theater of Blood is intentional. Like, I feel like they definitely intended Scythe Walking P2. Yeah. Uh, they definitely intend to start um, walking Sarpus because he's weak to Slash. Like, they're just clearly, like, yes, things that they intended that are good. Uh, but, I mean, it, it shows that they were learning and they were trying to introduce these factors. But it's still, I still think that players were advancing more rapidly than they could keep up with. That's, that's the fundamental thing. I don't know if it's that's like, necessarily true. I don't, don't, I don't think it's impossible. Not, it's, I, I keep seeing people say, like, Oh, you're just too good. Every like the the tick speed of attacks is too fast. It's that's not what makes something like interesting. I'm looking for depth. I'm looking for complexity. I think yeah, a regular chambers is not like hard, but speedrunning is interesting and fun. The idea like, is there's depth the, to it. Yeah, the idea is you can be a good player and still enjoy it because it has depth. Right, not just because it's uh, difficult. And I'm I'm not I'm not asking for content that only um, caters to me. I'm I'm asking for content that is interesting you know right and yeah, that no, doesn't this, mean this makes sense. i'm not saying every single desert treasure 2 boss needed to be like awakened level difficult or something like that i'm saying i wish they had more depth i like looking at the bosses i feel like whisper was like huge missed opportunity you can hit her between like the pillars if you can hit, fit in some like attacks here and there you can attack her during orb running and that kind of thing but it's a 20 percent um you, you do 20% damage. So it's just barely even worth it. So things like that, it's like... There, so, there was some yeah. depth to be had here. You know what I'm saying? Wh it's just Whisper, like... it, Whisper is crafted very well. It fits the bill as a boss that was designed. Yes. And, and, and fits its design very well. But it lacks depth. But the question is, why does it lack depth? And how do you just introduce depth to updates and PVM encounters? Right. I this think is it's the, really this hard is the age-old question. Sure. Because if, if, if you find the answer, then obviously it's like... You know they're gonna they're gonna go for it, right? Um, TOA invocations, enrage mechanics, these help. Yes, I think they are definitely steps forward in terms of uh, going down that route and actually sufficiently making it interesting for those players, right? But mm -hmm. they can't just do that for every single boss. No, they that's have to not be a bit more selective. Either. Yeah, like you said, one update a year, a rate of two year. years would be yeah. huge. It I, doesn't I, feel like we've. No. I mean, we technically have on paper, but it doesn't feel like those things that they've added have depth. So that's the struggle. It's it's a really tricky one. This is probably yeah. like uh, this is probably an insanely interesting topic to talk about with Arcane. Um, yeah, I mean, you may I, just like want to throw a DM to him or something. But I mean, personally, I, I think Arcane's really starting to. I mean, he. I could already see that he was getting it with Fasani's release. I think just the sheer fact that he could improve nightmare just something that was irredeemable it seemed at the time that he could somehow redeem it it's not perfect piece of content but he he also was under these restrictions of like okay we got to yeah. not just break the fucking rates and we got to keep it somewhat similar to nightmare so people that have done a lot of nightmare aren't just pissed off about the just completely making it easier but he did a really good job and i think he really understands how to get depth the problem is it's just really tough when you're trying to balance like for example the desert treasure 2 bosses they could be they could have more depth but the problem is is like i think in their mind they're seeing desert treasure 2 as this brand new piece of content that can really start to get people into higher level stuff and it's like the perfect way to introduce just four brand new bosses that are all intermediate difficulty and I say intermediate like intentionally because I think uh, like that truly is intermediate stuff. It's it it's good. It's like good intermediate. Like this is gonna teach you skills that are gonna that's, advance you into. Inferno that's why I think things. my timing of dropping my video is good because these bosses are really good like introduction into PVM and there's a yeah. lot more people like stepping into it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more people with eyes on PVM in general, like interested in it. Like yeah. There's nothing in the game that, like, Vardorvis teaches you uh, one tick, swapping prayers and moving at the same time. Like, I don't know if anything else does that. You, you've got to catch a range prey and dodge an axe at the same time a lot of the time. Nothing is, like, like distinct. Nothing is distinct, no, no. No. So it's definitely really good, mm -hmm. like, 
I like that they're introducing like mechanics that aren't done yeah. in other bosses. There, yeah. I still think they can introduce depth uh, in these updates, though. I don't think just because they're catering it to like a wider audience and trying to get them involved, it doesn't I, mean yeah. you can't have. I don't depth. think those are That's, exclusive. Mm -mm. I, I still think the problem relies on how do you make it emerge? How do, how do you just create something to allow for that? It's so difficult. I think usually that... it is just emerging gameplay. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. People figure something out. That's it. And, and a lot of Awaken Levi, I think, is accidental. Like I don't think they even knew you could trap tornadoes, probably. Mm, but probably. it's got some well, really cool even, implications. Yeah. I don't know. I think the I, the place yeah. the like the pieces of content you get the most depth are not single encounters though. They're generally the raids and stuff yes. where there's more people interacting with stuff. Because there's just so well, much more one, that can happen. One big reason for this is movement. Movement tends to be the big mm -hmm. thing that that is involved in immersion mechanics. Take chambers solos take uh Akka, for example butterflying is a great one yeah um I'll, most if not may, not all but most immersion mechanics make the use of movement and a lot of the normal bosses like vorkath it's just stationary zolora just pops up around you can't really do much you can yeah. walk vorkath but like that's the extent of the emergent you can emergent mm -hmm. gameplay yeah. you can have at vorkath and and having these wider arenas like Verzik pog tanking around the boss because it's massive and it's open and it moves towards you on because it's a massive room and you get pulled mm -hmm. areas that's something that movement especially plays into all of this in a big way. Mm -hmm. Just a thought, but like, um, I don't, I don't know many emergent mechanics of a really interesting nature that don't require that. And maybe that's yeah, a base to right. work on. Maybe, maybe that's, a, maybe that's a starting point for like deciding we want to make stuff that has emergent, interesting depth. Let's start with the feeling of movement and go from there. Like, oh, create the open space, create the drag tiles, create some of this. It's a really interesting conversation. That's what I, it I'd is love to talk to too. That's why it's so fun. It's the moving and doing things at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Avoiding I mean, a tornado it, inherently like forces movement. It's like you're, yes. you've got to be intelligent about where you go. And where you drop rocks means you need to be standing in the right places. It's just intelligent all around. Yeah, like exactly. You have to be knowing what you're doing, where you're standing the whole time. In terms of PVM, right, fundamentally it's movement, prayer switches, and uh, movement, prayer, inventory switches, and clicking stuff. But the clicking stuff yeah. is a lot of things. So any of those four things can make up emergent gameplay properties, but of all of those, the one that interacts with the game environment is movement and clicking stuff, which you do anyway. Yeah, so for sure. Fundamentally, it has, to, it has to incorporate it. Doing a thing is... Yeah, how, how, many have have how, how many places have emergent mechanics where you stand still? Like, none. Stand none still, attack a Kraken. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, you know... <laughs> it's it's a very cool conversation to have. Hey, there's, four, to... there's four tentacles you got to attack first. Oh, that's shit, true. that's true. <laughs> actually, no, not anymore. Didn't actually, just chuck a actually you, you know what's great? You know what's cool? You know what's called Kraken? You can do the speed up thing by standing back, throwing one, and getting like the same type oh, yeah. things. For that, I actually like that. That's kind of and, cool. that, and, that, like involves, and that involves movement. That involves movement. Yeah, it's crazy, true. right? It's true. So, I don't know. It's a really interesting topic. I'd love to. I might talk to Arkane about it a bit more and be like, "What do you think about movement as being like the basis for all of this?" Yeah. It seems to be. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. No, yeah, I mean, with yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna give a shout out to uh, Vardorvis. I think genuinely, and again, intermediate. It's not some something that's advanced, but it's this constant um, movement that you do have to do, and occasionally it switches up. You know, if he does do the little ice underneath your feet, where it gets a little bit more complex. But generally speaking, there's just two different spots. But there's always that risk of like you have to switch your prayer on the same tick as moving back to the original tile you were at. And I think just that simple step toward, okay, now we're introducing consistent moving throughout this fight. It's mm -hmm. getting people into this. It's like, okay, I can, I can do this. I'm not just constantly stuck in my little inventory area where I'm clicking prayers and stuff. I'm, I'm having to constantly be moving my mouse everywhere. I think it's Vard really is, good. Vard is, I think, the best of the regular ones. And it's also interesting that his defense drains based on damage done. I don't think they've ever done that. So mm. that's a really interesting, just the idea of like swapping to a less accurate weapon later in the fight is really cool. That is cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, he loses awesome. a defense level every 10 health. So oh, shit. Like eventually, Two, yeah. 215 down to 145 or something. Scythe, oh, yeah, that's really it's cool. like fa starts Fang Biss and then becomes Scythe at the end. It just depends on if you care to bring it or, you know. It's cool though. Very it's cool. cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, are we going to the next one? Well, let's Wait, did we already cover the direction of a game? Or is that the one we're going on to? Uh, we're going to it now. We're okay. doing update history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, What's the... 
Well, well here, let, let me ask you. So I feel like the yeah. consensus is we are on an upward climb. Like we're, we're in a good, healthy state of the game. We're just constantly aware and we want to keep things good, right? Yeah. Yes, for the overall game health. Yeah. 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 In, ter- in terms of concurrency, in terms of how many people are picking up the game and, and Desert Treasure enjoy it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Desert Treasure 2 was phenomenal. Like I, we, that was just an incredible update. I think it's just, it's, it has introduced and it's really accessible to a lot of players. It's just introduced a lot of good stuff to get involved with, like a lot of new stuff to get involved with all at once, which is really cool to be honest. Yes. Yeah. I thought the four new I... bosses was going to be overwhelming. It's actually like really cool. <laughs> I kind of like yeah. it. The reason I, I was myself. like, a lot of people are mad at me and I, and I sounded frustrated is because I was talking about how I, I, I talked about it very briefly, but I was like kind of frustrated with um, the bosses in general. And more so, that's not a fault with the bosses. I was calling them, every time somebody asked me what I thought about the boss, I'm like, they're more Muzzlas. <laughs> and, and they are. They're just, they're more like additions in that like content bracket, which is not a bad thing. It just is, it felt like frustrating that there's nothing slated. Um, it's summer summit is coming soon so i don't know if they'll be adding something but it felt frustrating that like that craving has not been satisfied for a long time and we're getting more uh, like similar like to what mm. we've had so that's where i was coming from i don't think desert treasure 2 is a bad update i see i do think i do think there's some some small differences with regards to the likes of vardorvis where most people can't just randomly ko you you'd have to mess up badly but a vardorvis can just ko you if you play badly for an instant yeah, I would um, also argue Muspa has more depth than any of them, though. So it's like, um, I, I don't know. I actually would disagree with that. You have you have health thresholds for switches, so it's a hundred health on range phase, 80, 80 to swap it from melee. So you have to keep track of damage you've dealt to do switches yeah. to do more efficient damage. There's there's um smite skip to the problem. Very complicated. I wish I wish smite skip could actually be done way more commonly. I hate that it's just yeah. It's like a that what. Would be neat. A, five percent chance of getting it like it's so low it depends on a I, lot of things but yeah it's, i do agree must has more depth after thinking about it yeah i mean it I definitely it does. does have yeah. gear swaps which is like the biggest thing i i agree with that but i feel like just i'm bringing up vardorvis only because i've done that the most is like that literally feels better it and i think part of it, it is 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 some there's there's something to do with melee distance stuff I feel like ranging and maging never quite feels. You're dancing with a boss. It's a little shorter paced. There's a lot of like, you're always at risk of dying. You can get comboed out pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. It's it feels better for sure. Yeah, I think that's it. What I'm people think I'm after like extreme difficulty, and that's not really what I want. I'm I'm after depth. I'm after like those interesting things that come out after mm-hmm. a boss has been out, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. That's that's what I really enjoy. So Maybe, I see. maybe one interesting question, because I, I agree Musper has more depth than the likes of Vardorvis. Mm-hmm. But I prefer doing Vardorvis. I do too. Why is that? I think it's is shorter. It the way to fight? It's, 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 it's shorter and it feels reactively it's, like... It's just positive. intense. It's shorter, there's more at stake. It's intense like, the right, whole way like, through. You enter Muspa and it's like, all right, time to fucking do like the the first half of the fight is just yeah. boring as hell. Just like yeah. I, I don't like I don't like the pace as much. In the same way, I don't like the pace of Whisperer because it, it, it's a good fight. It's just a, a bit slow, is what it yeah. feels like to me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, but but that's the thing is like maybe you don't always need depth to have enjoyment of the bosses because I could happily sit at Bardorvis, um and enjoy. Bardorvis is the one I've been doing the most. It's like, so fun. Sure. It's just it's just chill, but. And again, intermediate. It's nothing advanced. It's just like consistent. Mm-hmm. You got to stay focused and it's just quick kills and it's intense, I feel like. The, the only yeah. one that I felt is truly not good is Duke. Like Duke, Duke is the only Duke's... one I feel is not a good addition. The thing All is... of them felt like they teach interesting things and are decent. I just feel like they lacked some depth. That's all. Interesting. The, the Awakened version of Duke felt like it t- taught a lot more with regards to specifically timing, tick timing. Going from five to four tick and matching your position based on that. It required you know your really weapon good. cooldown very well. Yeah, we- weapon cooldown. I don't like awakened and Duke still though. <laughs> I, I I also don't really enjoy it, but I appreciate that it's it's got that depth and it's got that sort of. I like get what they're trying to do. Yeah, appeal. They're trying to yeah. get that mechanic, mechanic like learned. Um, yeah. But sorry, back to track backtrack a little bit. Like, if Vardorvis in that pure raw dodging feels better than having that depth at Musper, do we need depth mm-hmm. if we can have a bit of an alternative? 
obviously depth is good, but maybe it's not the end all as far as what no, makes it's not the, the only thing that matters, not at all, right? And maybe know. we can, yeah. Obviously, like if it's fun, it's fun, but like explaining why and then also trying to recreate it without it being the same thing is the trick. Does Zarpus necessarily have a ton of depth? I mean, there's like five ticking him, right? That's about has the end of it. Is he five bad, ticking though? correct patterns, step unders? Mm -hmm. um, I would say Zarpus has and, the and, least and, depth and of any. I would say Zarpus has the least depth of any top boss. So but that's it. Still, I still like it. Hmm. I like it too because it feels it feels you, well. You're using a lot of movement. Yeah, and there's a lot of just we, consistent we agree movement flow. Is great. Yeah, it's yeah. some something you get with flow. Like when you're talking about the whisper, it's like there's just there's too much like okay transitioning into this phase transitioning. Like if Zarpus had that, yeah. it's like weird transitions where like every twenty seconds you're just doing. It's like oh, okay, like I wish I could just stay in the cycle because I'm. Actually well, it only feels it. like it slows it down because you can't do damage. It's reduced. It's yeah. That twenty percent damage modifier feels bad. Yeah. You can't do anything interesting with it because she's just basically invulnerable. Mm -hmm. You can. It's still attacking. It's just less damage. It it's just little... barely does anything. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely think that again, movement is very much a key in in that if you have a if you have a cycle like attacking, and then you add one movement, mo one movement per cycle to that, um, or an offset like um. Uh, a different beat, like a four tick and a five tick cycle. These things that work together to 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 make it so you're the entire thing is a cycle together. Like moving back at Zarpus on a four tick. I know people don't people like the five tick, but if you do it on a four tick, you have that lovely feel. Um, and that alone, it's not really depth that we're looking for, but it feels hella good. Same thing for four to one on. Once you're in it, it's just like I attack and I move and I do my thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. That that is. A super fun thing they can always work with, I think. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah. um yeah, it is. Uh, so, okay. So direction of the game generally go. very good. Yeah. They're Interesting aware. Interesting that they're they're aware. I think they're trying to do things with depth, they're trying to make it stimulating, they're trying to cater and make it broad to a lot of different audience, but D T two bodes well. Um and it's just about let's see what the new updates hold and go from there because we yep. do need more to figure it out at this point. And scrap forestry part two. Sorry, <laughs> well, I actually don't like part two personally, but I don't I, think I, anybody I like does. One. Did you I see like he part one. video? Oh, he's insanely angry, and I I get uh, it as well. It's not good. I, I, I don't usually <laughs> care about skilling updates, and I liked part one, but I do not like part two. So something about the the mass amount of random events. It's just too many to me. It is. Yeah. It's just obnoxious. I, if it was just those three at the start, I would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. But it, it just feels like it's too many. Yeah, it's just getting out of control. Yeah. I hate the bringing an item to a skilling location too. RS3 does that with everything. <sighs> I hate it. I hate having and, an inventory set up to go chop trees. And T's is going to break the game, like actually. Tease. Yeah, they're actually tease. busted. I, I'm no skiller, but no to T's. No, 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 no. No. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, the last thing was just game health, which we've already kind of talked about just overall. It's in a good state. It's growing. Um, yeah. I feel like, obviously, obviously, be, just because the new quest came out, a lot of people, and it's summertime, a lot of people are playing right now and unburning. And I think that's always a good sign. And oh, is there any other PVM bosses coming out this year? Like any like mm, big PVM no. stuff that's planned? So, so, we, so Summer Summit's... Summer Summit's coming out soon, and we'll probably yeah, find out then, but okay. we don't know right now. Cool, cool. I think the only thing we know for the end of the year is Bounty Hunter, I'm pretty sure. Surely there's more than that. Okay. Um, some more topics in. Cool. So there was one last thing on your video, testimonials and player opinions. Do we have mm -hmm. anything on that? Yeah, I was just... um. Like I said, it was like a month process in the video. So I threw up a, a Jagex feedback section in my Discord and I, I plugged it on my stream and I was just like, yeah, just go in and throw up. I had like four questions. Get the questions again. Um, I asked. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, sorry, you're fine. I was trying to find it. I wrote it down at some point. I asked, uh, are you happy with the state of the game? Um, if you could make change, what would be your top priority? And what makes this game fun for you? And what makes this game unenjoyable for you? So those were yeah. the questions I asked. Yeah. Um, so I, I saw some of the responses. I read through of them, and mm -hmm. obviously the questions themselves. Th these questions in particular. Um, so I'll read them out again. Like, are you yeah. happy with the state of the game? 
if you could make the change, what would be your top priority? What makes this game fun for you? What makes this game unenjoyable for you? Clear emphasis on player opinion and what player they enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that's completely fine. And everyone's idea of what they enjoy is completely valid. And it's true. So you can't just say, like, you're wrong, because they're not. That's actually what they think. Right. And my only thing with this would be that just because someone knows what they enjoy doesn't mean it's good for the game. The, the most obvious examples of this... Yeah. No, not, not necessarily, but, like... In general, just because you know what you like doesn't mean that if you wanted a change in that favor, it doesn't necessarily make it good. It doesn't make I it enjoy bad getting either. more XP from woodcutting. They should increase the right. XP. That's not necessarily good. Yeah. 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 Sure. One of the best examples is like Fang. People love using the Fang right now. It's a cheap item that's accessible, and it's just like a, a Fang fits all. It's and if not you tell good. them, <laughs> right, and and if you tell them like you're destroying the niche for Scythe that is meant to be its strongest weapon niche, and it's not healthy for progression of the game to just be able to attach a like. Grab a fang and you're good to go. You're done. That's endgame PV and complete. Players at the low level see this and are like, I have a fang now. Let's fucking go. I can do all this content. But it destroys the long-term progression of the game. And it destroys the idea of being able to progress into more sort of serious builds with, with scythe and, and other stuff, right? It's just kind of like, I have a fang. Progression's over. And progression is key to old school. It's like what it's built on. So when I'm talking about stuff like that, clear examples of... The best analogy is you got a Timmy who's grown up at TOA and has a fang. And he's been get, he's yeah. being fed fed cake from Jagex. He this little Timmy just he's a bit overweight. And Timmy is just getting fed cake from TOA. Purples left and right, fang in his hand, swiping at bosses. And Timmy doesn't understand that while this is really fun, the long term health of the game and his health overall while eating so much cake is detrimental. <laughs> Timmy is obese and he's about to have a heart attack. And he's gonna stop playing because he's gonna be bored slash dead of the game. And how do you fix this? You take the cake away, which is equivalent mm -hmm. to nerfing Fang a bit or making it so that purples don't drop so consistently. And people get so angry at this because, firstly, I'm comparing them to fucking Timmy and they don't want to be a Timmy. <laughs> and, and, and secondly, they don't like the idea of it being a bad thing. But if you yeah. can explain, like, it is a bad thing because of the progression of the game. And even though you might like it right now, if you take it away, it's going to be beneficial to more players long term, including yourself, to enjoy the game for longer. And you make some good arguments like this. People are still going to say, you're just taking my cake away. And that's the end of, that's the end of the argument. So mm -hmm. it comes down to players have preferences and they are enjoying things in the game. Just because they like this and want more of it, is it okay to maybe say, actually, you shouldn't have this? And there will be backlash for that, but maybe it's the right choice. And then the question is, how do we know that the player testimonies are actually like saying the right thing if they're just going based on their opinion, what they enjoy? Because sure, maybe a lot of it the is point. the case. The of... point is just see no. what the general like opinion is. Right. Like, how, how do you feel about the state of the game? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's just like, I, you know, are you okay? Are you enjoying it? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I still think enough people fall prey to the idea that because they don't like it right now, it's therefore bad. That's all I'm trying to get at. Oh, because they like it, it's therefore good. Yeah, that's not and, necessarily fair. Yeah, that's not and, necessarily and it's, true. And it's, you have to take into account a bit more than just what you enjoy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you maybe the right choice might be to sacrifice a bit of what you enjoy for the betterment of the game. And it's very hard to both make that choice and be conscious of it in the first place. And I don't... But, I don't do that either. I, I get, like, players do that in general. I yeah. Anytime there's, like, um. A poll I don't understand or don't interact. Like, I don't do any PvP at all. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I never ever PK. So when I see a question about it, I'm, I'm just skipping it. Because unless it, like, has something to do with me and I have some input, I, it's pointless. Like, I can't, I can't give input on that. But I don't yeah. think it's bad. I'm not going to vote no to a PvP update because I want them to work on other things. I don't think PvP updates are bad. Right. I just don't interact with them. So yeah. for the state of the game, if it's, I vote on polls based on if it's, Improving the game, I think, then I vote yes. If I don't know, I skip. And if I don't think it's improving the game, I vote no. That's like always what I do. Yeah, great. That's mm -hmm. it, as it should be. I, I wish more people were both interested and willing to make it's, the sacrifice. Or it's understand impossible that. for people not to be biased. But, but yeah, it, yeah. It, it's asking people to not be ultimately. So it, yeah. they can't be, but I wish more people were. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm actually curious if so. I just want to read this one. Um, just, just the last one. I want to just hear your guys' takes on it. What makes this game unenjoyable for you both? If there is a thing. 
Um, like what's like the biggest thing? I don't currently I don't I, I currently enjoy the game, and I do too. Yeah. I for say. me, for for me, there was a point back in 2020, 2021 where I was into speedrunning big time, and all I wanted to do was more speeds, and I was I was in a position that felt increasingly frustrated, as as we've described here, like not getting catered to, trying to do the fun stuff. And ultimately, a mindset switch is is what it came down to for understanding maybe they just can't all do this in one go. Maybe it's not best for the game. And maybe you just don't have to play. I took a month's break to go play Lost Ark. I took a month's break to go play Overwatch at points. It helps. If you don't enjoy it, just don't play it. That's fundamentally what it comes down to. And so, therefore, I, I enjoy the game right now because if I wasn't, I wouldn't be playing it. Um, as for what actually forces that to be unenjoyable, it tends to be what I impose on myself. If I say, like, I want to do Inferno speedruns, and then I realize, ah, oh, but it's RNG-based. Not not all of it, but, like, a good portion is RNG-based. And I still want to bash against it, even though I hate RNG. Ultimately, I'm doing it to myself. <laughs> Ultimately, that's my own problem. And I have to weigh the choices on whether I think it's more fun to do it, or if I think I'm not going to enjoy it because of RNG. It's tricky because you don't know when you're going to cross the threshold of not enjoying it more than you do enjoy it. Or, like, Tyrael is becoming more tedious than the speedrun is fun. Which is why we're also so like so adamant on trying to change these things because so many players are like that. But yeah, give, I think um, for me it definitely self-imposed problems for the most part. I'll give my background before it. I, what I was doing right before streaming is air traffic control training. I was doing um, I was schooling to learn to do that. Extremely stressful. It's one of the most stressful jobs like on the planet, and learning to do it is even more stressful. Um, that's the kind of thing I really enjoy. I love the the like high stakes um, adrenaline of doing things. So that's I, I failed by 0.1%. I'm I'm not gonna like get into the whole details of it, but I, I barely didn't pass. You get blacklisted, they they kick you out. <laughs> Jesus. Um, that's yeah. cruel. It's it's brutal. So um, I started streaming with the goal to like feel that. So I I love like high stakes moments. I love like stressful situations. I love like being low health and just trying to like clutch something out. That's the kind of thing I love doing. Um, that's why I really like Inferno. There's a lot of times you're at like one health and you just have to keep going um, and hope you make it. Like you just have to make the right play given based on your, your resources. That's really, really satisfying to me. So um, that's my enjoyment of the game. So anything that makes, what makes the game unenjoyable for me is anything that like takes prevents me from getting that, I guess. Mm. Which is dumb things, like Cape Swap. It's the same thing that Addy was saying. It's like self-imposed things, I guess, technically. Yeah. It's like things that prevent me from getting that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, if if I were to answer it, it's really just... I think the biggest thing is just the um, lack of clear vision for skilling updates. I feel like skilling as a whole is just looked so down upon by anybody that's not a skiller. Because it's just usually shit content and nobody's yeah. like interested mm -hmm. in making any fundamental changes. So it's, I'm like trying, I've been trying to push, thing. I've been trying to like push for just giving people more, I don't know, like insight into skilling and the things that are actually making it fun and the things that are just bad updates and what people think are good updates because the XP rates increased. And it's just, I'm just trying to paint this picture. The other thing that makes the game unenjoyable is bots and the lack of. Yeah getting rid mm -hmm. of them that pisses me off <laughs> yeah anyway um addy you said something about like you know occasionally taking breaks and playing other games uh so i yeah. guess i'll ask you is there any games that you guys play besides osrs so for the longest time as with many people i also was probably like my only game I've, I've talked about this in stream and asked for polls and stuff and it's like something like 30% of players who play old school, at least in my stream, only play old school, only consume yep. old school content, something, mm -hmm. something like that number, uh, which means a majority of players don't. But I think a lot of that overlap with those players who do only play and also the players who are being frustrated is there. And that's maybe making a leap, but I think it's not untrue. Um, but as far as what I play, like I've picked up chess again in the last like year. Super enjoyable. Got a couple of friends who in old school play um, and I can dive into a game like any time I want. Overwatch was a big one for me in the last year as well. Um, playing the game pretty casually, still like trying to go for GM and, and trying to increase skill and stuff. It's still great. But I'm not invested heavily into the community beyond playing some games and having fun with it. 
Um, mm -hmm. So that, that comes and goes as I feel like I want to play it. Instead of, like, um, it's not something I'll always play, but if I feel like I'm getting a bit down with old school, I'll, I'll switch it up, basically. And having the option to is great. That's the main thing. But Overwatch chess, um, mostly that. We moved recently, so we have this whole apartment and stuff to do, pets to take care of each other, you know? Yeah. So it's a bit, it's mm -hmm. a bit more than just, like, old school is my everything right now, which is very good. That's good. No monkey. Yeah, I'm I'm crazy busy too, so not a ton of time to play things. But I I also played Overwatch at one point. Um, let's go. Let's go. I don't I like it. <laughs> you don't like of, it? No, I feel like the balancing <laughs> is just ruined lately. But um, um, heroes definitely have that method. But I haven't uh, even looked with... into it in a couple of years. So, oh sure, so. yeah. Um, I play a lot of Team Fortress Two. That's that's been like making a comeback recently. They got rid of all the bots and stuff. Um. I also just play a lot of single player games. I've been playing Pikmin 4. Um, played a load of like Elden Ring. I, I really love Dark Souls, although everything in that series, like things like that. Yeah, I could imagine you're definitely a Dark Souls kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, that, make, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Dude, you should stream Elden Ring. Did you ever? Have you ever? I'm waiting for the DLC. Oh, I'm definitely going to stream that. That would be fucking awesome content. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, well, I want to kind of wrap things up with just asking uh, each of you for, you know what, this time just two shout outs. Two so shout outs. I'll oh, start God. with Adicon and then no. Oh, monkey. God, I remember, I remember this last time yeah. I was trying to think about it. <laughs> I'll tell you one, uh, my, my hands don't work. Because he's going yeah, for Brush Order, yeah. and his achievements throughout the game have been incredible. And I think sometimes he thinks they're not quite up there, but they bloody well are. They're some of the most insane things in the game. Both his drive, determination, and like positive attitude towards it, just the never give up attitude is very fun to both watch and like track his progress. So, I can't wait for him to get blood torpor, and if you're watching, you're gonna get it, bro. Oh, um, yeah. Second person, God, um, shit, I don't know. Oh, come back to me for a second. Let's okay. Me one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I was gonna shout out uh, Mod Knox and Goblin. I mean, they've just been they've been chatting with me about things. Um, they really want to improve things. They they're very like open and they've been talking with me. I really appreciate it. Um, they really want what's best for the game. Knox is just like I feel like just really coming forward. I feel like he's gonna do great at Jagex. Also, shout out Cardiac, of course. That's my third one, but you have to. Make <laughs> <Cardiac, so. laughs> <laughs> Love it, Adikon. Did you think of your second? I'll I'll return and give it to Arcane because the J mods have knocked it out of the park with yeah, the two sure. and continue mm -hmm. to to improve it. And, and Arcane spear spearheaded. DT two bosses. So between all the J mods, yeah, they've they've done an incredible job. But not you know you can't single them out. It's not just like Nox and 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 uh, no, Goblin and Arcane. Great. It's it's, it's really all good. of them. But uh, you know those guys especially. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, this was actually really fun. Uh, I enjoyed just talking. You know about the state of the game. I think you two are both like definitely up there when it comes to just. When people think of high level PVMers, they think of Adicon, they think of No Monkey, and you guys are definitely like good examples to the community of just, you know, I don't know, kind of sharing your thoughts, which is always good of like being honest with yourself and also being really communicative with those thoughts and also being a huge part of the community and allowing others to voice their opinions and just having a good safe environment where you guys live stream i think you guys are just wonderful uh streamers and wonderful content creators that are like doing a lot of good for the game so thank you guys for being in the community thank you awesome okay uh n let's see down in the description guys we're gonna have no monkey and addy cons links down there also addy con and no monkey have been on the cast before so i'll have their previous episodes linked addy con's been on twice uh, no monkey oh. just a few months ago Whew. so if you guys want to check out their previous episodes you can check them out and uh let's see this saturday we're going to be having soup on the cast the creator of gilinor games so i'm really excited to talk to him and uh yeah if you guys want to support the podcast there's also a patreon link down in the description and that's it from me so guys any last thoughts any last things you want to say before we end awesome combo hope people open up a bit more to the idea of the conversation that was like one of the big things here don't just don't just sling mud have positive conversations and actually talk yeah, about the discussion it's really good yeah hell yeah it's the one big thing but yeah mm -hmm. all right guys thank all you guys awesome thank you all for listening and we'll catch you in the next one peace